good. Wow. Uh, woo! A lot of stuff just uh, happened. We didn't have Wi-Fi, and uh, or we had Wi-Fi, but uh, our internet cord broke. And uh, I'm going to have to leave here in about 10 or 15 minutes to go fix something on one of the websites. But uh, we wanted to come on here. We wanted to the people go live. They tune in to see me. Yeah, oh, you. right. You can leave now if you want. I'll be just fine. What do you got here? I got a haircut. What do you got there? A haircut today? Well, she's on your hair. Looking good. Thank you. Looking good. This is all they get from me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, but we got to, everything is uh, is back to normal right now. Like I said, I just got to leave here in about 10 or 15 minutes and uh, go fix something uh, on the live stream in the other room. So uh, we'll take care of that here in just a few minutes. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk a Monday Night Raw from last night. Big story broke yesterday. Yes. Daniel Bryan, going to give you guys all the latest on Daniel Bryan. What's the deal with him? God, you got to feel bad for that guy. I just wrote a column about it. I uh, Well, I wrote the column when his dad died, and then the Make-A-Wish kid died, and then his title reign, reign started sucking, and then he got the neck injury, and I, I wrote about it. It was, it was called uh, Talk About Bad Luck. Right, that's what I called it. And then today's follow-up was uh, "Bad Luck Gets Worse." Mm. So go to, well, I guess they can't go to eWrestlingNews.com. Yeah, to yeah. check that out. But uh, it'll be up there when the site's fixed. But uh, yeah, it, he's gone through the, uh, he's gone to hell and back. He's gone to hell and back, man. Yeah. Uh, I got the bad news uh, yesterday backstage at Raw. Well, doctors uh, confirmed it. I guess doctors confirmed it. Met with them last week, and then they did the angle where they taped the segment with Dr. Uh, Joseph Maroon backstage at Raw yesterday, and then that's what aired um, on the program. But there were a lot of creative rewrites backstage at Raw yesterday due to this. Uh, there's talk that he may not even be ready for SummerSlam. Um, well, Battlegrounds is, in between the two. Is that the pay per view between yeah, the two? Yeah, so if he's not ready for Battleground, then yeah. if he's not, let's put it this way. If he's not ready to go by the raw after battle, the night after battleground, uh -huh. they can't in good conscience take a risk for the third time hmm. of starting a build towards a pay per view, uh -huh. not knowing a hundred percent for sure right. if they can pay it off with an actual match. And, and that's what they did this time well, around they did it with at, Money in the Bank. They semi did it at payback. At payback, I, I know. mean, not fully, but they started it all. You know. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, it just it goes to show you guys how you know. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna you know, run it down in depth here in just a little bit uh, when we talk about Monday Night Raw. Uh, Ric Flair as well passed this WWE uh, medical Woo! test, uh, so he's going to be coming back. Uh, i tell you something talk, funny. To, talk of pairing him up with The Miz. Tell me something funny. Knock, knock. Who's there? No, I'm just kidding. I wrote an article <laughs> earlier today. It was called, uh, Ric Flair passes WWE medicals, comma, could be or could return at next week's Raw. And everybody flipped out because it said Ric Flair passes in the title. Are you? How do you know that? Because I put report Ric Flair passes WWE. Oh, medical so you test, stole it, and, everybody and said, all you the do. comments. Yo, everybody was like, "Wait a minute! I, lost I had that story before you last night." You did. You're right. You're right. All right, but anyway, okay. but everybody <clears throat> commented, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Shaley, my boss told me the guy that broke the Daniel Bryan story. We should give him the credit. Right. He Absolutely. Broke, he, he must be friends with Daniel Bryan or something. That motherfucker. Or gets, Brie Bella or Nikki Bella. One of the one of the three is uh, my joke with my running joke with him is I said, why don't you just admit that you and Daniel Bryan both <laughs> share like the, the same third cousin or something? Like how the fuck is all your right. stories only about him? Those right. are the only major <laughs> things you break. But uh, yeah, and he he my boss ends me and he says, yo, you freaked all the the viewers the the visitors out. They thought you were saying Ric Flair passes away. I said, how do you get Ric Flair passes away I, I out of Ric Flair passes his test? Like, right. What do you want me to... Ric Flair doesn't fail his test? Should I have wrote that instead? Like, what the fuck I got I say? yelled at. I got me yelled too. at. You're right. Well, you got yelled at by your boss, but I... Well, had no, no. Us. The two, the, in the, they have the comments. The same script that the e News. What's it called? The Discuss or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the comments. Every script. fucking... You'd think it'd be one or two guys. And I'm like, all right, they're just busting... Every fucking person was like, yo, you scared the shit out of me, dude. I saw, I saw Ric Flair passes, and I thought he was like... I had one guy, I had sorry. one guy say, you gotta be kidding me, man. Check your check your headline titles before you put them up. I'm thinking, are you serious? Man? I can't believe that happened. So how many what? dumb people you, in the world are there? Like, what, what? You get so many people, okay? <laughs> You'll put up a report, right? And, and granted, I mean, let's go back to... Uh, listen, let's go back to the Sting thing a couple of months ago. <laughs> I, 
<coughs> I put up on the website. <coughs> that was fucking great. Ah. Live chat room, WZROnline.com slash chat. We were told to incorporate the chat more often. I, I think, think we should I think we should incorporate that comment. Wait a minute. It's, 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 all right, all right. It would have been more funny, though, because I put a photo up on Facebook yesterday mm-hmm. of my, myself sitting on the steps, and I Did put you? sandals and socks oh, on. Oh, I didn't bed. know that. Okay. So I, I freely admit, see you soon. All right, well, they don't know what you're talking about. You gotta, you gotta, sandals and socks. They don't know what you're talking about. You gotta read the comments so they're, they're on the same page. Anyway, sandals and socks all yeah. day. I'm, well, a fish, I'm a fashion trendsetter. There's three people that know what we're talking about. Me, you, and the guy who said it. We're talking about sandals and socks and Ryan Clark putting why them do up we on rain, Facebook. Why do we randomly bring that up? Because Dino, oh, UK, because Dino UK in the chat room. He said, new article written by Boone called, I live with a man who wears sandals and socks and he thinks he's hip. I think that's pretty good. That's me. That's him. That's me. And a backwards hat. Funny joke or reality? Both. Reality. Truth. Your reality is a Speaking joke. Speaking the truth. Oh. What? Matt Boone yeah. lives with a guy who thinks he's hip. Right here. See you think you're hip? Oh, I'm hip. All right. Oh, I'm hip. I'm okay. good. <laughs> All right. So anyways, uh, so check it out. We're going to run down uh, Monday Night Raw from last night. No uh, no WWE pay-per-views this weekend, so I ain't got to come on here and... Uh, I'll sign on your shirt there. Yeah, I drew it <laughs> So I ain't got to come on here and... I never claim to be hip. I'll drink beer and spill all over <laughs> myself. And, uh, yeah. So we're going to run down uh, Monday Night Raw from last night. Uh, what did you think of Raw last night? Uh, it, 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 it dragged. It, it, but every week it drags. I mean, uh, you could say that every week, so that's not fair, but... um. Did it drag more so than usual last night? I don't think so. No. I, no, I don't think so. I mean, they had a couple things you would look forward to. Like, yeah. you wanted to hear the Seth Rollins explanation for turning on the shield. You mm-hmm. wanted to hear what was going to happen with the Daniel Bryan. Because the only thing they advertised for the show was that Daniel Bryan was going to be back to respond to Stephanie after last week's show. Right. Now, that took a fucking complete left turn right before the show. Surprised because they didn't have him on Raw last night? Well, not considering how the things played out. I mean, sure. the fact that they were going to strip him, you can't have him go out there and... He just let his wife quit for him. Right. Two weeks ago. <laughs> that three makes, weeks ago, that, that makes no sense. And then now. two weeks later, he's got to come out and say, "Here, I'm still not ready." Like he just looks like a pussy. If you're well, not, if you don't read the internet, and you don't know any better, you just follow the, the TV storylines, and you know what they tell you. Right. He looks like the biggest puss in the world. Right. And that was a big part of my column. Like, yo, if you don't know any better, you don't follow the stories behind the scenes. That's true. The casual. He thing. looks like a bitch. He right. let his girl quit. So he wouldn't lose the title, and then the next week he loses his title because he's not ready, because he's too hurt, and he can't suck it up and compete, even though if we're looking at real life versus story on real life, he's right. risking fucking paralysis or quadriplegia. Is that a word? No. Being a quadriplegic. But it's but you it's know not his mean? fault. It's the way WWE booked I'm just him, saying, it's, that's, right. that, I'm looking at it from a, a point of view of a nine-year-old that doesn't read the internet, right. that loves Daniel Bryan. Absolutely. That's, that's a big audience, that, right. that, that age group. Absolutely so, right. To them, he just looks like a fucking pussy. Like, he, ain't, he ain't a top guy that's a strong guy. Like, he, looks right. like a, he looks like a puss. Right. I he keep does. wanting to say a different word, but I don't want to get in trouble. He looks like a, a... C word? An F word. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, anyway, uh, so we're going to... I mean, Not that they're weak. Uh, you the know? Shield, you know, uh, <laughs> the Shield on uh, on Raw last night. I gotta tell you, Dean Ambrose killed it on the microphone. He crushed it. Seth Rollins, pow, <laughs> fucking home out of the run, park, bro. Big out time. of the park. Uh, Seth Rollins killed it on Seth the microphone. Seth Rollins did great. He hit a fucking uh, solid run. triple. Uh, Roman and, uh, Reigns, on the other hand, yeah, bunted the first base. <laughs> a bun, he a got, bunt or a single. He got on base. Pops, right? He got on base, but he <laughs> bunted it. a bunt. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Was it Good analogy. Good analogy. All right. Um, so we're going to, uh, like I said, we're going to run down Raw from top to bottom. Um, kind of a, what happened this past week? Something happened around here this past week. Local in our um, house? There's something around here. We've got the hall monitor outside. There's, yeah, there's a, a new... Yeah, Boone's not um, a big uh, big fan of him. No, Something back. happened. Um, oh, oh, Allison. Oh, she got arrested. She got arrested. Your sister got arrested. She got arrested. Yeah. Man. I got a uh, I got a I got a phone call a couple of days you ago. You whisper. Tell the story. She well, what's she, she gonna do? Bust in the door? Stop she, it! Yeah, she doesn't want it known to mm-hmm. To the strangers who will never know. They're a little, sho- little shoplifting from the Walmart store. Hey, listen, you want me to make you feel better? My sister's been busted three times for that exact same offense: stealing from Walmart. <sighs> so a little shopping. I get that phone call, man, and hey, I'm being arrested. I'm at Walmart. I said, "What are you doing shoplifting?" So anyway, she's got money. Go. You, you just got to. <laughs> 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 
<coughs> that was the uh, drama around here the past week. Other than that, uh, it's been kind of a quiet week. I mean, yesterday was so busy. We're what? Yesterday and today. We're five uh, days away, hopefully, from them opening that goddamn pool. I think this weekend, you would think, right? This I didn't hear the workers the out there today. This weekend would be the 15th. Right? Oh, is it? This? It is. It's Sunday. Sunday would be the 15th. The 15th yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so they should happen. Uh, I'll be there every weekend. single day. Day. During the afternoon, yeah, no doubt. After During, you, get those, yeah, uh, you gotta get some work done. Well, I don't. Columns up I wake there. up in the afternoon, so maybe like early evening I'll be there. When do they close it? At five? No, no. it stays open at eight. Really? Okay. Eight o'clock. They have a lifeguard sit there till eight. It's open from noon to eight. They have a day. lifeguard sit there till eight o'clock. Till eight o'clock. It's open at noon. Noon to Our eight. Our pool has a life. You can't go to the pool if the lifeguard doesn't show up for work. The pool's closed. Yeah, but think about it, That's dude. Stupid. Think about it from you. You got to You've got a, the management that owns this place, okay? If somebody were to go over there and drown, no. in the, if you some, put a sign up, swim at your own risk, boom, no more liability. Yeah, swim, yeah, but then there's still a chance for a lawsuit. Even if you yeah, put that, that sign updated. up. I know, but even if you put that sign up, some, some, you know, you know how people are in this world. If somebody gets, you know, they're, they're walking on the sidewalk in the wintertime and there's ice on the sidewalk and. There's a lawsuit. Oh, I slipped and I fell and I broke uh, my leg. You I didn't gonna say they would slip on the pool. There's a gate around the you pool. Didn't, you, didn't, you didn't insult the sidewalks. So I'm going to try to sue you for a million dollars. There's always that one Remember guy that out there, case? that one dickhead. Remember that, that famous case in McDonald's where a guy spilled hot coffee on himself? Yeah, and he and got millions. I know. He got millions. And ever since the coffee then, was too hot, he said. Well, ever since Get then, the fuck ever out of since here. then, McDonald's has the thing on the cup that says, warning, <laughs> this is hot. Guess what? <laughs> what did I just say? What? Swim at your own risk. Yeah. Liability gone. Oh. Parents, be a good parent to your kid. Don't let them fucking go swim by themselves. I know. Duh, I know. I'm a great swimmer. I can't go swimming unless I'm 12 year old sitting on a fucking bench. Hey, uh, listen. If you're a parent, <coughs> if you're a parent, and you're not a you're not a parent, no. but if you're a parent, you would feel safer at the pool with a lifeguard being there when you're. Five year old yeah, so child you can be lazy and lay in the sun with your eyes closed. No, not necessarily that, but in addition to you being there with your kid, you can have a lifeguard there as well, and you've got double the eyes on your kid. It makes sense for kids. It's not. You're not going to get me to agree with you. <laughs> All right. No, well, anyway. We're n nobody's wrong. I mean, no, it's, nobody's wrong, but. It's, Sucks that if the lifeguard's stupid. not there, the pool's closed. I mean, it's kind of a shitty deal. Anyways, all right. Stupid. Stupid. Oh, all right, so uh, let's get into it because we're running a little bit late here tonight. Like I said, i got to leave here in about 10 or 15 minutes just for five minutes or so, and uh, I'll leave Boone to run down a Monday Night Raw from last night. Uh, let's get these plugs out of the way. The official website of WZ... Whoa. Whoa. WZR TV Tuesday is WZRonline.com. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Go to Facebook.com slash WZR Army, YouTube.com slash WZR Archive, and we are on Twitter as well. Go to WZRonline.com, top navigation bar, drop down menu. It's yeah. got all the links to Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. WZRonline.com, the official home of WZR TV Tuesdays. Also, we've got a live chat room on and in progress. Lots and lots of people in there, as always, tonight. WZRonline.com. Dot com. Slash chat. WZRonline.com. Slash chat. Get in there. Lots and lots of people in there, as always, tonight. Bada bing, bada boom. No stuttering. Ready? Woo! I'm yeah. proud of myself. Uh, good thing we didn't rely on Wi Fi for this because that took about 10 minutes to load just now. Do you think that I could be one of those, uh, um, stewardesses? Is that what they call them on airplanes? S steward? Steward? Stewardess is the chick. Stewardess. The, well, what's the flight male? Flight attendant. What's the male version of You just a, call them a flight attendant. The flight attendant. Yeah. Do you think that I could be one of those? Th As I do the plugs, I'm, I'm relating it to the plugs. I, I say, check out WZRonline.com. You think I could get on an airplane and be like, and under your front seat, you've got the life jackets. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Emergency exits are over here. So on you your do the double wave. Side, right. yeah. On your left hand side. <laughs> as you get on the airplane. Yeah. I, say, I, can, I can do it. I can yes. do it. Oh. Anyways. Uh, all right. So, what do we say in. that they're all getting drunk now? What would? I think it's dot com. Oh, I dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. com. <laughs> Y'all getting drunk right. tonight, bitches. Here we go. Uh, all right. So let's get into it, man. Monday Night Raw. We're gonna bring up uh, Daniel Bryan as well. We'll kind of relate that into uh, into this, and then in uh, our numero dos, taking our live phone calls and doing the rapid fire segment. We'll give out the uh, live phone number here in just a little bit. So. 
Earlier in the day, uh, yesterday, your boss, uh, Michael Shalik of SCScoops.com, yeah. uh, sold them that site about 10 years, uh, not 10 years ago, probably about Close. 7, 8 years yeah. ago. Say about We're getting old, man. I know we are. I know. We are. <coughs> um, but uh, my favorite part is all my friends that said, "Dude, get a real fucking job, man. You're gonna two years from now, you're gonna regret the shit out of doing it." And they're scrambling in a recession to find yeah. work, and I'm sitting on my ass in my fucking room when, in my underwear, eating a big hunk of cheese, drinking a beer, smoking a cigarette and a joint, and typing for a living. Fuck I tell you, sixteen, seventeen. What are we? Sixteen years running now. Fuck them. Words. What, I'm about to turn 34 in August? Yeah. What are you, 30? I'm 30 next, a month from today. A month from now, right. Yeah. So you're about to turn 30. Well, a month from yesterday, depending, is there 31 days, 30 days, that's September, April, June, uh, 30 days this month, so yeah, I guess I'm uh, a little less than a month now. I'll be 34 on August 16th. I'm getting old, man. You're getting old. You're only 29? 29, 30 next month. Right? Are you 29? Yeah. Anyways, Young um, so... Money we gotta talk wrong. about the Chelsea Sun and stuff too. We, oh, we don't right. do it now. I'll save that for when you go out of the room. That's something I can babble about for a minute. All right, yeah, that's a uh, big story <coughs> in the uh, in the MMA yeah. world today <coughs> that uh, Boone will talk about. Chelsea uh, Sun and there was some, failed a uh, a drug test. Which and there was some great fights about. this past weekend too. We had Dakota uh, Martinez. Right. We had the uh, Benson Henderson versus that Russian dude. Oh my God, Cotto Martinez, that and, first uh, round, bro. Real quick oh. though, the Diego Sanchez Ross Pearson decision. Oh man, maybe the worst ever. Ross is uh, gonna appeal that. Uh, He's I not gonna. That. They never overturn. I know. That. No I matter know. how obvious it is, they will not overturn. I know. But uh, so. yeah, some good fights, and I lost a lot of money for the first time in a while. Not only. It, my bad predictions have gone from it. wrestling. WWE pay-per-views. To, right? They say if you gamble too much, eventually you hit a slump. Right, right. No matter how good you are. <laughs> and listen, I'm fucking great. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But, uh, are you hip? I'm not hip. But I'm in a slump. Why would you say you're not hip? You're a young cat. You're um, in the UFC. You're in the MMA. You're in the pro wrestling. Because it's a fucking it's, douchebag it's thing to say I'm a hip. Who wants to you're run hip. around? I'm a hip guy. Well, you're hip, though. Uh, yeah. right, if young. you say I'm hip, I'll take it. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm hip. I'm not going to toot my own horn. Oh, I'm hip. Yeah, whatever. Toot, toot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into it, man. fart? No, I said toot, toot, because oh, I'm hip. Yeah, I'm no. tooting my own horn. Toot, fart. All right. Bad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a great comedian either. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Get to our live chat room, wzronline.com slash chat, wzronline.com slash, slash chat. Get in there. Alright, here we go. So Monday Night Raw from last night. Earlier in the day, your boss, uh, <coughs> Shalik, scoops.com broke a uh, Shalik, broke story um, that Daniel Bryan was not going to be cleared in time for the Money yeah. in the Bank pay-per-view coming up on June 29th. Um, and I was told that there were high-level executives within WWE, like guys you would know, that were sitting around when we put that story up on SC Scoops, and then everybody stole it and credit. They all credited us, you know, according to SC Scoops. Well, but I took uh, it and gave them oh, put credit. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about like everybody, though, like, right? Even people we don't know, like we know you, so you did us a favor. But like people right. that don't even know us, they said, "Yeah, this is their story." But um, they were apparently sitting around. Backstage at Raw, like, yo, how the fuck did that get out? You know, and how the hell did this? I've never even heard of this site. How did this site get it? Right. You know, so right. we, we, we were making waves in the old uh, Dub Dub E land. So it was, you know, it was it was known during the early, uh, early well, later afternoon hours, I guess mid-afternoon point, you know, 3, 4 o'clock, that Daniel Bryan was, you know, not going to be cleared in time for the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. And then it basically, with that being said, uh, they were going to have to go ahead with plans to strip Daniel Bryan of the WWE title. Now, the previous week on Raw, they were going to go into the Money in the Bank pay-per-view with two matches planned, it was either going to be Kane versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE title, or if that didn't happen, in a stretcher match. we were going to get in a stretcher match. Instead of a buried a, alive match, which confused me, because right. that was the plan, and then all of a sudden, stretch match, whatever. Right, but you could keep Kane around. If you do a buried alive that match, was the idea. off TV for Not only off TV, time. they wanted to keep that program going. Right. Like, they were right. going to do, if, let's just say Bryan was able to work, Money in the Bank. He would have worked Kane, he would have beat him, and then they would have done it a third time at a battleground because right. All right, we don't want to start them off with a big program before SummerSlam or uh, uh, going into SummerSlam like, going into SummerSlam put it this way he beats Kane and Money in the Bank and then we start his big next thing well they were going to do and they, they already had they the were going to do Lesnar and Daniel Bryan at SummerSlam yeah that was 
discussion. I, I right. hope they wouldn't go that route because then Brian has to lose, and if Lester's not sticking around, how the hell does that work? That's true. You know, That's true. but uh, and I wrote, I didn't write it. Well, you say how the hell does does that work without Dana Bryan sticking around? They had the Undertaker. Yeah, but Undertaker's not around either. Right, but they had Brock Lesnar defeat the streak but the following night, or or two weeks after WrestleMania. Lesnar was gone. It wasn't. It wasn't a matter of Lesnar. It was a matter of Taker. Did you not hear the whole story? The, the whole point was that Taker's done. Right. So it doesn't matter. He could have been fighting Joe Schmo. Joe Schmo was beating him or not beating him. It was a call for Vince to make. Either we end this streak with him winning and going out into the fucking sunset, or he loses his final battle right. and goes off into the sunset. So uh, the fact that Lesnar, a part timer, was his opponent was irrelevant. That was second. That was second. But, but you you say that Taker is done, and sure, there are reports out there that Taker looks like he's done. No, it's not a matter. But come WrestleMania every single yeah. year, you know what but happens with the. You understand. say that every single year. Is sixty years old? Ten years from now, he's still gonna go. I'm not saying I'm not saying ten years from now, but oh. I, I, I'm saying I don't think, uh, in in my opinion, yeah. and there may be reports to the contrary out there. I think we're going to see Undertaker at WrestleMania next year, despite the loss. I'll say we won't. You'll say we won't. We won't. If they get Sting, would they do Sting Undertaker? Now I, maybe. I, I, that's I mean, the only chance because that's a dream match that it doesn't matter that he's got a win loss streak thing going. It's just a dream match. Right. You just throw a regular fucking dude in there on the roster. It's like, why is he? He just lost, and he's only got one more in him. Maybe two. Like, I don't even want to speculate. That's what I'm saying. He's only got a couple more wrestling in him. No, like the point was this: going into this year, there was a very. This is the point. There was a very good chance that was his last one. Not for sure. Right. But a bit like put it this way: next year is very, very, very questionable. So, if that's the case, then Vince either decides we end this 20-year run of him never losing at WrestleMania, either with him losing, and that's why he's done, or he wins, and we hope that he goes next year, and then he can lose on that one. But if he doesn't, then we didn't even have a chance to have him lose and break the streak. Why so. Why to a part-timer in Brock Lesnar when you've got a guy like uh, Cesaro or somebody like that, somebody that's a full-timer? Come on. That could why, why Brock Lesnar of all people why Brock Taker's Lesnar? the kind of guy where if somebody's going to beat him, especially that legendary thing, it's got to be believable. Daniel Bryan can't beat Undertaker in a street fight, and Taker's got that like. But Taker's the type of guy way, that Taker wants was, to put somebody over on Taker, the way out. We've always said that. And Lesnar was the if you remember there was a story about four or five years ago. Taker wanted to put Lesnar over at WrestleMania before he quit the company. He wanted to be he wanted Lesnar to be the guy. Right to break the streak, and then when they did that thing at the UFC, you want to do it? Remember that Ariel Hawani interview? He wanted Lesnar. That that was the big thing. It was going to be Lesnar taking that year. They're going to pretend like they had a personal beef or something. And he wanted the job to Lesnar that year. He wanted Lesnar to be the guy. But wasn't Lesnar full time back then? No, no this was when he was in the UFC. Guy. Still, this, come on. It, it, oh, it, 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 was after, after, it was after the fight. Yeah, but but before but, that. Before that, Lesnar was a full-time I'm guy talking about, he left for UFC. I'm talking about the you want to do it thing. After that happened, mm -hmm. Vince was pretty damn sure he was going to get Brock, who was not retired from UFC at this point. Mm -hmm. He was still an active UFC fighter. He just lost the first fight, or he just lost the title. Second loss, he lost to Frank Mir in his first fight. But uh, he just lost, and he's still a UFC fighter, you know, and, and he fought against that. He fought over him, Al Star Overstream. Okay. But he was still an active UFC guy, but they wanted Dana White to allow him to do WrestleMania. Both, right. And it was only going to be a one-time thing. And mm -hmm. Taker still wanted him to be the guy to, to break the streak. I, I, it's, I, I feel like, okay, if you're gonna, if you're gonna break the Undertaker streak, I'm not agreeing with it. I'm just explaining just why saying, they did it. You can, you, you say that the guy that breaks the Undertaker streak, you gotta make him look believable. You gotta make him look no, like no, no, somebody. No. Taker that wanted that. Okay, okay. Well, hey, 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 if, if that's what Taker wanted, what you're saying is the guy that beats the Undertaker, you gotta make him look believable. And, and Taker wanted that as well. Like you're saying, Taker wants somebody that looks believable. It's all about building a guy up going into WrestleMania. Who's to say that you couldn't have taken a guy like Cesaro? I'm just bringing up Cesaro's name as, you know, just a, a random person. But who's to say that you couldn't take a guy? You could. And three or four months before WrestleMania, push the shit out of this guy. Hype him up 
and then have a full-time guy like that you could defeat the Undertaker. But the uh, the point was they already chose Lesnar. I, I so the match was already decided upon. Once WWE decides something, it's very hard to get them to change their mind. Even though you hear they all oh, they do these rewrites all the time. When they have a big long term, this is our WrestleMania fucking main event. Yeah, right. They try and go to that, right? You know, which was made the Bryant, Daniel Bryan thing even that more shocking because that was not part of the plan. Right. But the fact remains: once they decided this is the guy, then the decision became: well, does Taker lose or does he win? Right. And ultimately, Vince, not Taker. Oh, you spilled some beer there too, there, but oh, I cracked it open. I didn't. Oh, I didn't take a swing, and it drips down oh, my that's shirt. Cool. I it. Well, your hip on that. I cracked it open. Your hip on that. I spilled it on my chin. You drop it on the computer. Get out of here. Yours was worse than mine. I can wipe mine off the chin. What is your computer never? Yours was again? worse than mine. You oh, know, yours was worse. Than mine. Bottom line. Bottom, bottom line. <laughs> All right. So Monday Night Raw. Bottom line is, let's get into Monday Night Raw <laughs> from last night. So they opened it up. Uh, Triple H uh, on Twitter said that there's going to be a blockbuster announcement to open <coughs> this week's Raw broadcast. Sure enough, Raw opens up. Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, the authority, come down to the ring. You got the authority. Cue it up. I was trying not to do it so we could talk over it. Oh, all right. So uh, the authority comes down to the ring. We've got uh, Stephanie McMahon and Triple H, and they are just giggity, 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 whoop, 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 whoop. Tonight is a good night, and why is tonight a good night? I'll tell you why. Tell me why. Because they've got a video from Dr. Joseph Maroon, who's WWE's official doctor, the guy that performed the surgery on Daniel Bryan, and he is here to tell us that after <coughs> examining Daniel Bryan, he will be unable to compete at the Money in the Bank yeah. pay per view. And that was the out so that Brian didn't that have to come out. out and say, No, I can't. Right. Because if, if they right. didn't do that, then the other option would be Brian comes out and they say, All right, we need to know right now, can you or can you not? And since he can't in real life, he can't say yes. Right. So, you know, yes. He has to say no. Right. And right. you don't want him to look like a bitch and say, no, I can't, I'm too hurt here. You don't want him to look like a bitch, yeah. but yet you had him running from Kane That's a, a good, couple of weeks ago. <laughs> good point. <laughs> you had him screaming <laughs> off in a car right here in Albany. That's right? what I say. There's certain guys in that company that did not want him to get over. No. Pretend his neck injury never happened. They're still. He's had one of the worst title reigns in the history. Why Kane after he wins the title? What a fuck you. Like, yo, you're the champ. We're going with you. But the next main event, even if Kane and Daniel Bryan had happened to pay back, the next main event is the Shield versus Evolution. Yeah, You're like underneath that. You're right. underneath that. But who else is that? Well, I guess Randy With a Kane Orton. rematch. They could have done Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan. They could have done something like that. They could have done, done a lot of Triple things. H, but Daniel the point Daniel being, Bryan they did Daniel guys. Bryan Kane, and then after that, they were going to do it again in a very live match of payback. Yeah. And that was going to be the semi main under Evolution and the Shield. So, uh -huh. Evolution, a group that has Batista. Right. Randy Orton. I know. And Triple H. Now, what do those three guys got in common? Uh, Batista, Randy Orton, and Triple H. Yeah. The three guys that are much bigger wrong. than a guy like Kane. Daniel Bryan beat all I'm three not of them. Wrong. Those three guys are bigger. Whatever. Daniel bigger names. Than Daniel a guy Bryan like Kane. beat all three of them at WrestleMania to win the title, and then on two shows later, they're the main event. They're the main event, and they're underneath. The three guys he beat are above right. him, and he's underneath them defending the world title. Well, well it's retarded. No, there's that too. That's the main there's, point there's I was making. that, yeah. <laughs> but, um, and they're also bigger than him. Yeah, right. Get out of here. Uh, I don't mean bigger. I mean <laughs> bigger names. Yeah, you know no, what I'm talking about. But, um... So, yeah. No, it, it, I mean, it was just... It was... Stupid. It was That's what I mean. I guarantee you, there's certain people behind closed doors. Right. Behind closed doors, there's certain people that said, how can we fuck this up? Right. I don't know if they came out right and said, how can we fuck this up? But they would, in their head, think that, want that... And then pitch ideas that would reach that goal. How can but we try and sell crowd? it? But try and sell it to the decision makers is like this will be great for them. Right. All the while knowing, yeah, hey, you motherfucker, yeah, you oh, can't oh, oh, do this. Well, while we're trying to tell the crowd in the process, yeah. we don't give a fuck about this match. But the problem with and that is, anytime Daniel Bryan, the whole yes thing yeah. is so over at this point that no matter they could put Daniel Bryan in there with a guy like Santino Morella. And you know what? It's a bit it's, of a stretch. It's still going to get oh, over. It's still get it's over, still gonna, yeah. It's just because of the Dan O'Brien yes thing. That it's, I mean, same thing was, of course, a bit of a stretch. But yeah. any, you know, you know what I mean. Well, they're going to change yes no matter what. The, the right. idea is to get him over as the biggest thing in the, in the company. As the biggest guy in the We're company. Right. Don't even do that. But, right. what the fuck was I about to say? Who cares? 
getting it back to Raw. That's what I was going to say. They pretty much shot instead that, like, hey, we told you he wasn't championship material. We told you, we so. told you he wasn't tough enough to be a champion. Like, all they, that shit. They even said, Brie Bella, you had your wife out here last week or the week before, yeah. and she wound up quitting. And for what? And for what? Because you're now stripped of the title. So she never had to quit. No. She never had to do any of that stuff. Point but... And that goes to show you if that right there isn't proof enough for you guys to know that this injury they were booking on a week to week basis. And they were putting where pressure on they, him where they wanted him to return. They wanted him sooner to than back, yeah. right. They they were they were they were booking on a week to week basis with the hope that please dear God Daniel Bryan is going to be able to work the Money in the Bank pay per view. And then they got word within the past couple of days or the past week or so. That no matter what, he, he can't, can't work. Yeah. He and can't what? work. Not only that, but people say that Daniel Bryan, um, his left left or right arm is numb. Yeah, it's uh, losing strength or something. So yeah. it's instead of recovering, it's getting you're worse. losing feeling yeah, yeah. in your arm, and it's it's not. It makes good. it sound like the next worst than we thought. And if he goes back too soon, you damage it more, and then you're pretty much retired. Right, like right. Edge. Right, and he had to retire out of the fucking. Well, blue. there was fear about his career. I mean, but but that's part of the reason that they're keeping him off Money in the Bank and probably Battleground as well. Where if you've got numbing in your arm, you're not you're not working Money in the Bank. And We're, we want you. We still want yeah. you as a part of our as a part of our future. But you know, it's not worth the risk, despite. How much, despite how they were booking on a week to week basis and, and booking on the fly with the hope that Daniel Bryan would work money in the bank, it all comes down to listen, if this guy really does go out there and wrestle at money in the bank, you're risking his career, and that's not something. I mean, come on, that's stupid. That's. I had a you know, point to make, like, you just made like eight different points. Right. But eight points ago when you're talking about Brie Bella, the way they really fucked themselves was, like you said, with the money, they thought he'd be ready by money in the bank, and they felt that they needed. The title to be on the line in some form or fashion at payback. Right. You can't do a match, so we'll do a storyline where the title's on the line. Either she, either Brie Bella quits or gets fired, mm -hmm. or you get stripped of the title. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have that angle so that the title is <coughs> technically on the line at the show. Right. Thinking, by Money in the Bank, he'll be back, so she'll quit, he'll wrestle Money in the Bank, he'll still be champion, and we'll get Brie back right. later. And then what happened was... That because they're so cocky and arrogant, and they thought they could pressure him into returning earlier, and they thought he would return, you know, and all that. Mm -hmm. And then when it didn't work out, it's like, well, all right, so we just had you have your wife quit because we thought you'd be ready, mm -hmm. and then you're not ready, so we just fucked ourselves. And the worst part is they've got the network now, so they don't need to sell pay-per-views. Right, right. You know, so well, they didn't need the title to be on the line to sell payback. No, they don't because most of the people that already have the network are already signed up. They've signed yeah. up for WrestleMania and everything else. I so mean, look, the, this week payback was the number one watch. Last week was the number one most watched show. Last week, week, week and after, this week. yeah, right, right, still number one. So right. it's like you didn't need to sell payback as a pay per view. You've already got. The people that are going to watch it are already subscribed. They bought WrestleMania. They're already there. You didn't there. need to sell money in the no, bank. So you I didn't need to put right. the title on the line. So you didn't right. need to create that storyline where you fucked yourself and made Brian look like a bitch by having his wife quit and then still give up the title a week later. It's it's complete, uh, you know, week to week booking. Like I talked about earlier, dude. They and, screwed and themselves. They screwed themselves. They wound up wound up screwing themselves. And then last night on Raw, they had to completely backtrack where everything. That they had. Uh, uh oh, are we yeah. lagging? Are we still plugged in? Oh, okay? disconnected. It just said. Oh no, no. We're still plugged in. Are we plugged in? <laughs> that may be. Uh, that might a, be a them. Justin TV issue. Let's see what happens here with the. Uh, it just said disconnected, reestablished, connected, reconnected, but it should be starting to do. Could these. be somebody in my room hitting the cords. Yeah, there they go. We should room. be good now. All right. Now it's doing the things. Again. Somebody might have been in my room and kicked the uh, kicked the. Look, everybody feet. signed out too to turn something and fix like it. that. Yeah. Christ. Hopefully they uh, they come back. Let us know if uh, we're back to good now. We'll I got a feeling somebody might have been in my room and kicked the uh, cord because I have it out and I've got my cigarette. You just tell her from now on what you're doing. Everything else I know. So. <laughs> Anyways, what are you gonna do? It should uh, we should be back and uh, and Hopefully. ready to go now. Somebody probably uh, kicked the uh, the cord in the uh, in the other room. By the way, I said I was gonna have to yeah, leave. Yeah, we're here. good now. All right, yeah, that's that's what happened. I said I was gonna have. There's nothing in there. I'm fucking believe. Get out of there. There's nothing in there. Uh, but 
Anyways. One um, guy guessed it, and one didn't. Yeah. I won't say who's who. One guy got it correct. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Anyways, um, get to our live chat room, wzronline.com. Motherfucking dog. Slash chat, wcronline.com slash chat. What uh, you want, I would man. love to run a rant right now. I won't, but I'd love to. Take me a lot to hold back, man. Yeah, don't do it. Man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're All 43 right. minutes in. They're not going to set out. that up on purpose to test. Did to you really? If anybody was like a tripwire? there. Like a tripwire. <laughs> And the tripped wire. Busted. All right. Anyways, uh, here we here we go. So that was the opening segment of Raw. They basically stripped Daniel Bryan of the WWE World Heavyweight Title. Yes. And, that yeah, and they hyped up all night the Seth Rollins thing. Seth Rollins all night gonna come out and he's gonna explain his right. actions. He was on SmackDown and he did the typical. I don't just explain myself to you fans. Promo. Right. Right. So this was he promised tonight he's gonna last night he's gonna say everything. He's gonna reveal right. why he did it. Right. Well, what happened on SmackDown? He didn't say anything on it. Yeah, he did a promo, but I th- think he pretty much just said that, uh, you know, I don't have to tell you guys, I don't have to explain myself to you. Mm. That's how I heard it. I didn't actually, okay. I didn't watch SmackDown, and I didn't write spoilers, but that, I remember hearing that somewhere. So. All right. So we had the authority announcement. Then, I'll tell you what, and we're not going to, we've only got about 15 minutes, so we'll skip over some of the uh, the high points and the low points, right? Or, we'll run down the high points, skip over yeah. the low points. But um, You can just say who won the two of these. No, Sheamus and Bad News Barrett. I gotta tell you, it's a good match. They yeah. gave that about fifteen minutes. I want to say fifteen, to somewhere around fifteen minutes. Yeah, what a commercial! That yeah. was a hell of a match. That was Sheamus one of Sheamus has been having some kick-ass matches. Yeah. ever since he's come back since Royal Rumble. And that Bad News Barrett, likewise, has had a lot of great matches on TV too. There's been some matches with you know the Shield and uh, the Wyatt family, yeah. you know, a month or two ago on on Raw, which tore the house yeah, down. Daniel Bryan and anybody. I gotta tell you, uh, Sheamus and Bad News Barrett last night on Raw, one of the best matches on Raw that I've seen in in weeks. In, yeah. In well, weeks, I mean, you weeks. remember remember the Sheamus Christian matches? Yeah. Before Christian went, yeah. yeah. He's just been he's been doing it. You know, he uh, Sheamus has already had a great match. One, week. he's been doing it, man. And we had put up on the website that there was going to be, uh, well, the uh, the current, the original plans, and that's what they did last night on Raw. There were going to be uh, two Money in the Bank qualifying matches on uh, on Raw last night, and that's what happened. I think it was Rob Van Dam and uh, Cesaro, Cesaro yeah. in the uh, in the other qualifying match. So we had uh, the Sheamus. winners were Sheamus, Sheamus and uh, Cesaro yes. were uh, were the winners. And we'll talk about, I mean, we'll give our predictions in a couple of weeks before we get into Money in the Bank. Yeah. But I'm scared to, but all right, I'll do it. I, what do you, uh, <laughs> by the way, by the way, back to the opening segment here. For the hell of it, Stephanie, or Triple H out of nowhere says, oh, and by the way, the Money in the Bank, we've already got Alberto Del Rio. Oh, yeah. well, by the way, she said Alberto Del Rio, he qualified last week on SmackDown. Yeah. No. He qualified last week on Raw as the match took place on Raw, not Smack. And I have an awful memory. You're, you're as, I was writing, as I was writing play by play, I even put in parentheses, I could swear that happened on Raw. That happened Smackdown, on Raw. But whatever, you know. So, anyways, we've got Albert, Alberto Del Rio. And then Triple H says, and by the way, just because of who he is, Randy Orton's going to yeah. be added to the match, too. Who he is and Like, like Rand, Randy just gets this free pass. You're, you're, you're in uh, Money in the Bank. Now, with that being said, I mean, I know there was talk about Cesaro possibly gaining the briefcase, and I think I may go that route uh, when we do our predictions in a couple of weeks by, by picking Cesaro, because he's got a year to cash in the money this in the bank. This is not for a briefcase. Oh, that's right. This is for the strap. This is for the strap. So it's going to okay. be Orton or Cena. It'll be or Orton then, but just because of the way... I'm afraid Cena. Super Cena is going to come. Cena, you think so? I, I hope not. Oh, I really hope not, because Orton just had the strap going into Mania. Right. Brian had it for like two seconds, and now we're going right back to Orton. They've got me so fucking confused that I thought it... There's going to be another Money in the Bank, well, which is to going be. to be... They're supposed to be. I think what they're going to do over well, my there... My thing is, let's put it this way. There's seven spots in the Money right. in the Bank for the strap. Let's say they are. Let's do another seven for the <coughs> for the briefcase. That's fourteen guys. They don't have a roster that deep to where you can no, have no, no, two no, no, matches no, no, no. with fourteen guys and then still have six other matches 
Wait a minute. We How many it, guys you got? We put it up on the uh, on the website. I put it up on WZROnline.com today. Basically, they talk the, about five, but still. Well, the the Raw Money in the Bank ladder match is going to feature the top names. You're talking uh, Randy Orton, John Cena, uh, Alberto Del Rio, Sheamus last top night, uh, Cesaro. Pe- people bad like news that. Bear, yeah. Well, Bad News Barrett didn't call. I mean, uh, Sheamus. The yeah. second Money in the Bank ladder match, they're talking about more or less up-and-comers on the roster. And yeah, when yeah. I say up-and-comers, we're talking about people like possibly Bo Dallas as they're on a push for Bo Dallas. Guys like that that are in the mid-card position, yeah, and I yeah, think yeah. that... Bo I Dallas think, ain't no mid-carder yet. Well, they're trying to push him. Yeah. I, I'm just using him as an example of <coughs> a guy, and I think with the problem... I'm thinking more like Dolph Ziggler, RVD, like guys that can people do a like good that. ladder okay, match no doubt, and no that have some status. Some, okay, there you go. Somebody, somebody like that. Um, but there's always that one guy in there that you know doesn't. It's he's kind of the he's out of place, you know. Yes. So you have like a Dolph Ziggler probably, and like you said, maybe the thing with Ziggler a, is though. He already lost the qualifying match for the first Money in the Bank against Del Rio. Well, you just brought up RBD as well, and RBD, I was just using him know, as an example. Right, right. Guys that can perform ladder matches, good, like good fucking high flying, good technical, whatever the fuck, and then guys that are have a name. Right. Not really fucking on the ground level just coming we'll, in, guys. We'll see what happens tonight at the SmackDown tapings, but I wouldn't be surprised to, you know, next week on Raw, you're probably going to have some Money in the Bank qualifying matches where it'll be John Cena against somebody, and uh, who's the other guy that we put up on the website today? John Cena and um, <gasps> the other guys that's going to be added into Money in the Bank. John Cena and... Uh, Don't know what you're talking about. Oh, God, it's not coming to me. Uh, John Cena, it, but qualifying matches next week on Raw, and I'm guessing that maybe some sort of announcement will be made on SmackDown tonight, where there'll be a second Money in the Bank. We'll see the SmackDown tapings here in about an hour or two. Uh, there's a one-hour delay tonight as they're in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. You can't but, uh, really do Raw ladder match, SmackDown ladder match anymore either, though, because there is no Raw group and SmackDown group. Both every roster guy works on both it, shows. It How would you say it, these are the Raw guys? These no, are the no, SmackDown no, no, no. It wouldn't guys. be built up like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the matches yeah. would be for the World Heavyweight Title. Yeah. The other match would be for a shot yeah, yeah, at yeah. that World Heavyweight Title. So you've got one for the title and one for a shot the at place. that title yeah. down the line. So. It would make sense to do it that way. But anyways, um, so great match between uh, Sheamus and Bad News Barrett. Uh, Zack Ryder, complete squash here by Rusev, man. What do you think of uh, Lana, Lena, on, Lana. The, uh, on the microphone? Uh, she's basically ripping off fucking uh, Brigitte Nielsen from Rocky IV. I've told you that every week. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the same fucking character. Vince has got a hard on for Obama. Vince has Oh my a, god, that he, was where did that video come from? Obama leaked, was doing like a workout that looked real good. Obama gay. was doing a workout video. Yeah. It leaked on TMZ Is that where it came or, from? or one of the other websites. Okay. That there's was a big thing in the White House with Secret Service and they go through and they canvass the whole area. How did somebody get a recording of Obama? Well the president the guy the most powerful nation in the world. The there guy was a leak. The guy was in the gym, and he had a camera strapped to his back or his hat or something like that, and it leaked out, and then came online. Uh, he looked and like a pussy, Obama, too. Uh, Obama, Vince, it's it's well known, Vince is, what, Linda's a Republican or Democrat? Republican, Republican yeah. right? Well known that Vince McMahon is not a fan of Obama, and part of the reason that the whole I think that was more Putin, this, that, and the other that thing. too. But uh, I think it was more of the fact that Vince is a big, big, he's a big politic person, workout guy. Oh, yeah, he true. loves the fucking working right. out. He's a muscle guy. What do you call bodybuilder? He's a big bodybuilding guy. He tried to open a bodybuilding federation, and but, then you got Obama, the most powerful man in the nation, looking right. like a bitch. And then but he, also, you know, I, mean, I think he was just poking fun at that. Like, yo, look been, at this. He, fruit he may out. have been poking fun at that this <laughs> week, but the previous weeks he's been taking shots at Obama and America and the United States and how our leader is this daddy's garbage yeah. he sucks and Vladimir Putin. And then the video just happened to come out and Vince was like, well, fuck yeah. I think the, uh, We've already been shitting on him. Now this is extra ammo to kind of add in to the promo. I think the Putin so. stuff was more along the lines of like, remember Muhammad Hassan? Right. Or when Sergeant Slaughter was the Iraqi sympathizer during the right. Gulf War, or fucking Iron well, Sheik, or like, I think they just wanted to have that nationalistic American guy versus foreign bad guy, and they want to build him up right. as a foreign bad guy, and then have 
John Cena or some good right. American it, loving guy not only that, take but, out the evil Russian. But right, but Putin has also been a guy within the last couple of years. Very where, controversial figure. Very controversial. Yeah, well, exactly like the Saudi slaughter thing against uh, exactly. against Saddam Hussein, Muhammad right. Islam, against the uh, uh, what's the guy's name that got killed? Uh, 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 Bin Laden. Bin Laden. Like they 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 just yeah. try to find the biggest dictator or yeah. foreign scumbag. Right. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Have and, this and guy like suck up to that. Putin. Yeah. Right now, Putin is in a major war with the United States. Not necessarily a war, but a war of words where they're telling. You know how him we get rid of other. Putin? Uh, we kill. Him. You lock him in a room with me. I kick his ass in two seconds. Putin uh, is part of the KGB, brother. You don't want to mess with the KGB. I take that back. You don't want to mess with the they KGB. They might be watching. No. Yes. The Russian mafia, brother. You don't want to fuck with that. I'll kick a Russian mafia's <laughs> ass any day of the week. You will, Twice dude. on Sunday. You don't want to fuck with the KGB. <coughs> All right, we had a uh, beer. We need to get a commercial. How much we got? Seven. Drink both of them beers already. I had three too. Yeah, three? Give me that one right there. You got something over there. I got a bunch left. This is only my second beer. Right. Catch up, kid. We didn't have any beers last night, so kind of. Uh, I'm thirsty. Are right? you? You're always mm-hmm. thirsty. Um. Let's see. All right. Let's, before we go to the break, we got about seven minutes left, right? So, three MBs out there dancing, right? And uh, the Shield winds up coming out to the ring. The two members left of the Shield, Dean Ambrose and uh, Roman Reigns. Ambrose grabs a mic, and dude, Ambrose was... He killed it, bro. He killed it, bro. I, there's been weeks he where I've said, you know what, it. I think he's overrated on the mic. I've said that on this show. I've always praised him on the microphone. I'm wrong. He's awesome, man. That was an am- that was his- that might be his best promo to date. Yeah, that was great. He when he was shaking beforehand, is right. right here, and I'm gonna put it over here to your and ear. I'm gonna rip your fucking hair out and put it where your teeth used to be. And it, it, I just can't even do it justice. He did great. He did really, it really was good. Very. And what was very the best part about it was he always seemed like. He could cut a great heel promo. He was such an right. unlikable guy. He should be a heel. He came off, yeah. Put it this way. The best performers can do both. Right. Roddy Piper can do both. Fucking, Absolutely. uh... Who am I? Jake the Snake Roberts can do both. If you're right. a great talker, Ric Flair can do both. Ambrose came off. He did a great babyface promo. It was night. awesome. It, it was great. Awesome. And then, after oh, it was man. over... Funny moment here. After it was over, Ambrose is all riled up, and he throws down the microphone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he goes, and he picks it up. And he smiles, and he's just, too. I'm sorry. Yeah. And he hands it he's to like Reigns, and, and Reigns gives him this big-ass smirk, yeah. like, yeah, man, we're brothers, pick and then it up. from boy. there... And then from there... Oh, man. Roman Reigns grabs the We microphone. were getting him credit and, and week after it. week after week. Reigns is getting good on the mic. He's getting good. Yo, he's got it. He's got it. He ain't got it. Uh, wait a minute. Wait he a minute. Got wait it. a minute. He ain't got it, bro. He needs work. He, you know, listen, it wasn't a short sound bite. Don't give him that much. No, no, I get that. <clears throat> it should be one or two lines, one or two lines, and that's it. But eventually... He's going to have to branch out, especially if they're going to go with Roman Reigns and Triple H at SummerSlam, yeah. which it looks like they're going to do. Now, with that being said, Roman Reigns is working your house shows. Have Roman Reigns go out on your house shows and cut a long promo before... Wait a minute. Cut yeah, a long yeah. promo before his match. Get some mic work in. Work on it. Then come to TV. Improve yourself then cut a full-fledged promo on Raw, and hopefully they do that going into the match with Triple H because he's going to need to cut promos with that match because Triple H is going to murder him on the mic. He's going to murder him on the microphone if Roman doesn't get some practice at house shows and things like that. So, here's the problem. Last night, here's, go ahead. What's the problem? Some people just ain't got it. You don't think he's got it? Some people just ain't got it. He He ain't got it. I'm telling you, I can tell I when a guy's got does. it, and when a guy ain't got it, he ain't got it, man. He's not a 10-minute promo guy. At best, you can get him to perfect the style of the quick one-two punchline. You may be right. And then just attack. You may be right. He, he, he just ain't got it. He don't got it. He's not like his cousin, The Rock. Let's put it that way. No, he, no. He ain't even the same fucking league. I mean, nobody's uh, in The Rock's league, really. You know, Flair and a couple of guys. But wait a minute. Let's, look, look, there's a couple months until August, okay? We've got June, July, August, and then we get into SummerSlam. You, you, he can cut a promo every house show from now until oh. SummerSlam. He ain't, he's just, You're probably right. He just ain't got it. Well, then and he, the thing that sucks is all the good uh, managers that could speak for him are heels. Zeb Coulter, Paul Heyman, you know, you go down the list, they're all heels. Yet they're about to bring Flair in, 
and pair him up with the Miz. Yeah, but you don't want Remember? Flair with Reigns. No, you don't want Flair with Reigns. You're right. Yeah, you're yeah, right. yeah. You're we right. take away because Flair would be doing these great promos, and everybody'd be like, "Oh, Flair was awesome tonight," and Reigns just stood there. Get him with Heyman, but Heyman's already got Cesaro in the Brock. Heyman's thing. a heel. I know. Yeah. Heyman's if you want to push Reigns as a big fucking rugged heel, you give him Heyman. He's fucking going to the moon. As Where's my top boy heel. Jim Mitchell at, man? Bring Jim Mitchell. Sinister Jim. Yeah, Jim. bring him. I didn't know you fucking knew that name. Bring you know him. I used to know that guy when I first started out in like 1998. I used to yeah. talk to him. Did you? I was a little fucking teenager. I used to talk to he Sinister Jim. He was ECW, Jim. man. He was I don't friend. I don't know how I know this. My friend Barbed Wire Mike was his screen name. I never knew him or nothing. We were just internet buddies. Right. Barbed Wire Mike knew Sinister Jim. I don't even know who the fuck Barbed Wire Mike <laughs> is. I had hardcore headlines. Dot hypermark dot net. And me and Barb Wire Mike ran it, and fucking he somehow knew Sinister Jim, and we would interview him all the time, and I'd really? talk to him on the phone all the time. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Somehow he knew him. It was right around a little bit, like two, maybe a year or two after he had that incident where he burned his whole fucking body off at a fucking right. uh, uh, show or whatever. Yeah. You know who else is so underrated from back in the days of ECW is Joel Gertner, bro. I think he's rated pretty good. I mean, everybody thought he was fun. He was great in ECW, but he's never come to WWE. He's never been in well, what are they gonna ECW, do with him? right? What do you do with him? No, no, he never did nothing. With him. I, nothing you major. never managed somebody. He's an amazing talker. Anybody. He's put funny, him with anybody. He's, he's funny. Can so he get over a match? Can he get over a character? He can make you laugh. I, I don't know. He's a, he's a great... Listen, you say he's funny, and he was back yeah. in the days of ECW. Who's to say that he can't come to WWE... With a serious gimmick and no, still be right. that good of a talker a guy that and can, get somebody over. If a guy can get over as a great comedy talker, if you teach him the ropes and he's got the... With comedy, you got to know timing. And, right. and he had great timing. I was awesome. If, if you teach him the serious, dramatic route or whatever, you, you, you take those same elements and you put him over this way, he right. might be able to make it work. But be able to. he we wasn't that elite where it's like, God, how did nobody ever use this guy? I don't think he was on that level. Nah, he was pretty fucking Men great, are man. from Mars, women are from Venus, <laughs> and when they get to the ECW <laughs> arena, they like to ride by, and then, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, that's just easy shit. Yeah, he, was with, uh, he was with the that's Dudleys, Andrew right? Dice it, was, it was Joel and the Dudleys, right? Joel yeah, he was a part of that, and, and then there was start. a while where it was him and the, uh, the network, Don Cal. Right, right. Yeah, and then it was him and Joey Styles would introduce the shows and the arenas yeah. a lot. But yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Anyway, so let's get back That's to his uh, nickname, the quintessential stud muffin. Stud muffin. That's yeah. what it was, too. And he had the big neck brace on all the time. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right, here we go. Back to uh, Monday Night Raw. So the promo, I mean, Roman Reigns gets on the microphone and he basically <laughs> says, Yeah, it was. You don't plug on Superman. Wait a minute. Cape, you know? You're making him out to be that. This I didn't like promo, it. You didn't like it? I didn't like it at all. I Listen, thought it was bad. I'm not going to shit all over him. It wasn't like it was a disaster. Like yeah, he, not a disaster. He came on the microphone and he cut the promo. He didn't flub his lines or anything like that. He did a little bit. His timing ah, was real iffy. His, his timing his was... His facials iffy. weren't there. His yeah. timing... But after the promo was over, you were like, you know what? That was fucking good right there, man. That was good shit. With Reigns? With, with both of them. Well, I'm talking the promo when Ambrose, segment as a whole. When Ambrose was done, I was like, that was fucking amazing. When Reigns was done, I went from thinking, yo, this guy's underrated on him. Like, people think he can't carry a promo. He might be able to. And then they gave him some fucking talk time last night and, uh, no. I, I thought his, no. His, his, his final line where he said something like, Triple H, you like to play the game or we're going to play the Game of Thrones. I thought that was a good spot. It was a good way to end it, dude. No, they gave the him good game, material, the but game he didn't of deliver Thrones good. line was good at the end. The Superman cape, don't talk on Superman's cape, right. don't piss in the wind, don't it fuck, don't stab terrible. your brothers in the back. They gave him good lines, he just can't deliver it. What you guys think in the chat? I, I understand the timing was, was a little bit off, I agree with you on that. But, it wasn't this train wreck from Roman Reigns Not that a train wreck. seemed to be making it Not up. a train wreck at all, I agree with that. But, I'm looking at him week to week like, can this guy go on his own yet? And he's nowhere close. He's right. nowhere close. And SummerSlam's only, what, a month, two months away? Right. Can he get that good in two months? No. And he's been around not. a year talking, and they've given him a little bit more each week, a little bit more, and then they finally give him this nice little thing. I thought it went, I didn't like it. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. But I say it was okay. I mean, it wasn't, 
Uh, Dean Ambrose was clearly, clearly shined during this segment. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Roman Reigns, eh, a little bit. You go to the chat, and then you don't read none of the comments. Well, they, all say was, with they say it was weak. This one says it was okay. I agree with Boone. I have to agree weak. with Boone. I have to agree. I I'm not, I'm not saying I, I don't completely disagree with you, dude. It wasn't oh, a I know what you're promo. saying. It was not but a train wreck. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. I don't think it was a train wreck. He did okay. He needs work. He, needs work. he did all right. Right. All right. But okay. you can't be all right and be the top guy. He's getting better. You expect too much. He's not getting better. He was getting better. And we then they finally gave enough him enough of him to know. That was the thing last night. We finally saw a little bit of him. For the first time, so yeah. give him give him some time. Work work on it at the house shows, and work on it for the next two months going into SummerSlam. He's been around give him a little for bit a year. They would give him the last closing line that was always a good one liner, and he would always kill it. And then they would give him two lines, and he'd kill that. Last night they only gave him like three or four lines, and he couldn't fucking do it. Uh, Dean Ambrose went on for two three minutes straight. Reigns went on if you time it and hit a stopwatch and watch it. It was probably forty five seconds. And he, could, he can't do a 45 second promo now And in two months you want him to do a 10 oh, minute promo Oh come on You, you want him to do a 10 minute he promo He couldn't do a 45 second promo He was pretty He was decent last mm, night He was he's decent He's not decent main event I'm going against Triple H oh, SummerSlam no. Then no, you're right. I've got to do a 10 minute i got to do a 10 15 minute dueling promo With Triple H Where I say something He responds And then i got to respond to what he says He's by himself talking to a camera And he can't do it when you got somebody that's, that's harder. Listening. No, when, no, you, it's when not. you're talking, no, it's not. If somebody's in front of you. No. You're in front of me. Listen, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The two of us I are disagree. here. The two of us are yeah. here doing a show right now. This is different. now if Ryan Clark was to be here all by himself yeah. and have to do a show that's with nobody same. with nobody responding to me. You don't have a script the, with your lines written for you that's like he does. Be, it's the same thing. If I was sitting here and I'm looking into a camera by myself with nobody to respond, nobody to to the dead air and everything else, there's nobody. But when I got it's you not here, the same. it is the same. When Triple H starts dogging him, and he's got to quickly improvise, he can't read written shit. He's got to memorize three lines, he can't do it, he can't perform it. We don't have a script. When you got Triple H, and Triple H is fucking good on the mic, he's really underrated. And, and when he wants to fucking bury someone, which I don't think he wants to do with Reigns, but... When they get the, he's not gonna let him. He's not gonna bring himself down to Reigns' level. He's gonna stay on his level. He's and Reigns either right. comes I'm up sure. to his level or he fucking sinks. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I don't know. You are listening to WZR TV are. with Ryan Rapid Clark, Fire. Ryan Clark, and Matt Boone. Rapid Fire Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark <laughs> WZR. Uh, go submit your rapid fire questions. We're gonna put that up on the website right now. Take about a five or ten minute break. We'll come back. We'll finish it up. And Clark is right on this one. Bada bing, bada bing. He gets one comment. He's loving reading that. Eight hundred comments a minute ago. Uh, let's go to the chat. Never mind. Uh, blah 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 blah. Clark's right. Bam. Suck my ball. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to WZR TV with this guy right here. Me. This guy right here. Him. Be back. Yes. Right after this. By the way, it's Matt Boone, Ryan Clark. Let me spill my beer with a chop. I'll fuck you up. Dollar dollar bills. Dollar dollar bills. I just got changed. Stacks. What you know about stacks? I know they're boring on a uh, web. We're back. Our no <coughs> about those. I had to get my change from my sister, man. Um, I think you stole one of my beers tonight, dude. Didn't. Now wait a minute. I had one mm -hmm. before we came on. There were two sitting here during the show. I cracked one open. I dumped that in there. That's my second one. Okay. Yeah. Then I've got two more here. Three, four, and there's one left in the fridge. So that would make five. I guess I did. Because this. I gave you yeah, four of my beer. It's all right. <clears throat> I'm actually, to be honest with you, and I think it might be because. We didn't drink any beer last night. I feel a little fuzzy off uh, two beers. No, My you stomach don't. Hurts. I don't know. Does it? Yeah, I don't feel mm. good. Anyways, uh, so here we go. We uh, <laughs> we're gonna do an hour of numero dos. Put the rapid fire up during the commercial break. So we got that up. We're gonna be taking your live phone calls. Let us uh, finish up Monday Night Raw here in just a second. We're just gonna, like I said, we'll do the high points, skip the low points, very quickly run it uh, run it down. We do need to talk, um, actually, what's the uh, the next big uh, moment on Raw? Talk about the uh, the Shield, Ambrose, Reigns promo. The next big moment, I would have to say, oh my god, 
Fondango and Damian Sandow against the Usos. All right, listen. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. Damian Sandow. I'm going to agree with you. I'm, uh, this let's is see a dude. Hold on. Damian Sandow. This is a dude that had the money in the be- money in the bank briefcase. They were pushing him. Everything was good. This, that, and the other thing. And then all of a sudden, Sandow goes from not way up here, but you know here. Way down here, where week after week they're having him do the stupidest of all. He comes out as the local yeah. basketball he guy, comes the out, local baseball guy. There was a raw guest host, the cup Hugh Jackman. He comes out as X Men or somebody like that. Yeah, the guy some that guy. Was, yeah, he did Lance whatever. Stevenson last week. All uh, right, the the basketball player, or whatever. Right, with the basketball, and he had the hoop out yeah. there and everything. Listen. And I have thought week after week, we'll see what the chat says about this. I have thought week after week, you've got to be kidding me. This is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. I'm telling you, and you may have heard me last night, and I know the people that were listening to the live stream all eight last of them. night. All, no, there was like 15 people in the chat last right. night. I had a good amount of people. I laughed out loud. I did too. I was marking out loud. I loved it. All right. I feel terrible. Right. I feel terrible that the guy, you know, they were going to push this guy. He had the briefcase, for Christ's sakes. But his shit last night is in ring spots where he got tangled up in the ropes at one point. He goes, whoa. He haven't even explained it yet. He came out as an interpretive dancer in a flesh colored leotard. And he was doing, you know, waving the ribbon and fucking doing the fucking baller, ballerina ballet shit. Right. And my thing, I wrote on Facebook too, and I only wrote one comment on Facebook during Raw last night, and this was it. And I said, I don't remember what I said, but the basic gist was, because uh, it was lengthy, but I basically said he did too good tonight because WWE's probably going to team him with Fandango for a while and have, right. have him do that because it got over with the crowd. I was, loved it. It was funny. He was good at, at executing it. And if I was him, that would have been one of those where I would have underplayed my abilities a little bit. Right. I don't right. want to get that over because then I'm going to be stuck doing that bullshit. I think he's going to be stuck doing that he's bullshit. Probably it was fucking funny, man. It was hot. I was hilarious. loving it. I was loving it. I was loving it and hating it. I was loving it just because if you're watching it for what it is, it's right. fucking funny. It was hilarious. But if you look and at you the talent... And you know how WWE's comedy is. So, yeah. Right. But, but if you look at the talent... If you look at the talent he's got and his abilities, he's capable of so much more than that. It's like, why? Just because he can do that and pull it off, a lot of guys can pull that off. You're going to just pigeonhole him into this dickhead gimmick because he made it work? He took a shitty thing you gave him, mm-hmm. and like you always say, make the best of it. <coughs> you, you make the best of this opportunity, right. you'll get another opportunity, and right. then another, and another. And he's done that time after fucking time. He, he took a shit Damien Sandow gimmick in the first place, that yep. rich, pompous, yep. I'm smarter than you asshole thing. Right. And he fucking he made it he, he made he it work brilliantly. It. Yep. And then they give him the leotard. And he makes that work. Right. Even the basketball thing, as goofy and as retarded and douchey as it was, he was kind of funny doing that. Like ah, he can see. do he can do things. He can get something out of anything. You right. give him anything, he can get something out of it. Now right. he got more right. out of last night than the basketball, obviously. Right. 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 But my point is, he's got the talent and the ability and the skill that if you give him a shit idea, mm-hmm. he'll make it something. Right. And he'll get it over, and he got that over. What he did last he's night. He's going to be a victim I, of his own talent because they're going to make him do that for a I, while. I've seen WWE comedy for, God, years now. And normally I go on <laughs> Facebook. Yeah. Normally I go on Facebook and I say, you got to be kidding me with yeah. this. What the fuck am I watching right now? It last was night I said, Damien Sandow wins Raw. He fucking he won. Took a page, for three hours on he Raw. He took last a page night. at a Will Ferrell right. circa old school. <laughs> If you ever seen the movie Old School and you see Will Ferrell with the ribbon doing right. the interpretive dancing, he right. is just as good as the best comic improvised guy he in the was business. Good, he, he was, was great. Awesome. But like you said, you feel so bad for him because you know the amount of talent that he's got. Not only that, I remember a story, and it was so busy during WrestleMania time that it got buried fairly quickly, and we never really followed up on it. But Damian Sandow was spotted on Bourbon Street in. Uh, New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, handing out money to random homeless people. His own money was handing out money, and he said he insisted to people that approached him 
hey, dude, I he said, I don't want any press. A, uh, a news crew approached him, and he said, I don't want any press off this. Please don't put anything out there. And, of course, the news crew went out and put it out there anyways, yeah. and then fans emailed us, and we put it up on the Internet. But this is a guy that, outside of his gimmick, outside of his character, he sticks is a genuinely nice guy who was giving money to homeless people. Who He was at, um, when they came to Albany, he did the... Uh, uh, bully, be, be a star. Okay. Be a star. The uh, the bullying rally. He goes to all the be a stars when they go to city to city. He was giving money out to homeless people. He's so good with kids. And then you see him portrayed. You know, like like. I don't know. I don't know what he did, man. But he's in that, he's right? in that Dolph happened? Ziggler class where it's like they're just making fun of him every week. Like why? Like he was. Right. You gave him a shit thing. He made it work. Right. He got it over. He's doing great with it. Why do this? And the thing that sucks is, the fucking guy, like, he sticks to the, like you were talking about, out of character. When have you seen him out of character? Really? You know how many people that do that Sam Roberts show interview? He what's did the, it. What's, what's the haps? That guy, what's yeah. The, what's the, the, the haps, Anthony bro? Anthony guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah so he, he, he does the, uh, and they stole that from Stern. Stern has the wrap-up show. Sam Roberts does, like, their version of the wrap-up oh, really? show. Yeah. 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 They're fucking, they're all really Sam fun. Roberts is great no, he's great. With and he knows he's wrestling. You guys know him, he's the nerdy guy. The big fucking... Uh, big afro. Yeah. yeah. But um, anytime you see Sam Roberts interview somebody, they come out of character. Like mm -hmm. the Bella Twins you put up not too long ago, that was a great interview they did with him. Very good. Or them. Right. And, like anytime somebody does an interview with them, they come out of character and they mm -hmm. and they shoot the shit with them. Right. When he did that interview, I remember it, I think it was going into Mania, I'm not sure, but it was before a pay-per-view... Were they in the airport where he interviewed all the guys? Sitting in chairs? Yeah, sitting yeah. In chairs and in the he airport. stayed in character, Did he? but tried to answer questions like half in character, half right, not, but it was right. still, you don't know who this guy really is yeah. if you watch an interview. Right. Any other right. Sam Roberts interview, you kind of get a feel for the personality, how the person is. Sandow is so committed to being that guy. Right. He's great. Good I don't know why. Him, why man. would they and not give him more? I, we haven't heard anything that's happened. I didn't hear him, anything to be you know, pissed anybody off. Right, yeah, right, yeah, I don't I know. know why. Anyway, so he was great in that role last night. Not only that, but Jesus, dude. They got him out there on like see-through gear for Christ's sake. He's in his long johns, I mean, right? the tightest. It, hey, was, it was a little bit funny. much to watch, <laughs> but was, it was fucking it funny. It was awesome, man. It was funny. Uh, what do you think of Bo Dallas so far? I mean, you said a couple of weeks ago that you thought that, you know, Bo Dallas is one of those guys that he may make it or he may flop. I mean, listen, they're trying to push the guy. They're... They're well, trying. I, I said for the longest time, when I saw the vignettes, for because they did the Adam Rose, Bo Dallas vignettes at the same time. They were both coming in from NXT. And I said, the Adam just based on the vignettes, because I didn't watch any right. NXT, so I didn't know anything about them. I just knew their vignettes. Mm -hmm. And I said, that Adam Rose thing might get like a cult following and might get over. Bo right. Dallas is playing. Yeah. Now I'm thinking the opposite. I'm the thinking, opposite. That's oh, what Dallas, you said last week too, right? Dallas might get that shit over. Right. Adam Rose, is he's not getting that over. That's my opinion. I mean, we'll I, see. I mean, you never know what's going to sink or swim in WWE. But I, I, you know what I was thinking? Dallas is getting it over. I, I mean, listen. Yo, my favorite part. I'm sorry. Okay. During the match, it was him and Xavier Woods is what we're talking about. And uh, I don't know if the fan said something or if this is just part of his gimmick, but he's, like, beating Xavier Woods' ass. And, and let's just pretend the fans say, you know, Woods, you suck. He said, hey, be nice, he's trying his best, or he's trying his hardest. And then he started kicking his ass again. Hey, he's trying his best, be nice. Like, he saw it. It was just fucking funny. Did you hear Cena uh, before the main event as well? The crowd got silent, and you hear some chick yell out, John, I love you. And Cena yells back, I love you too. And then they shot to a commercial break. Uh, hey, with Bo Dallas, though, I, this did, did this cross... Anybody else's mind? Bo leave, right? Bo leave, Bo Dallas. Did it cross anybody else's mind? Bo leave in the shield, where we are three members down to two. If they were going to add, if they were going to add a new member, shit, I'm just saying. <laughs> if they were going right. to add a new member, listen, uh. it's an easy replacement for Seth. He's Rollins. been saying Bo leave for could two even, months. You think they've had it planned that we're going to have Seth Rollins two months from now turn, and everybody's going to think, oh, Bo so leave, no, believe in the shield. No, you're going back two months. Wait a oh. minute. But he's, he's had the Bo leave thing for a while. He's had the Bo leave gimmick for months now. They've been doing. You're this saying because it fits, maybe they should put him. We in. know that the Seth Rollins uh, <laughs> to take him out of the 
shield. They decided on that, what, about three weeks ago we put it up on the website? The Seth Rollins? Uh, Seth Rollins leaving the shield. This was only planned for about three or four weeks. They kept it out of the Raw script on Monday. I didn't even know it, that. I thought it was decided like that. It right was after, decided. No, wait, it was decided the night after payback, I heard. It, the which was three weeks ago? Well, they did it the next week. It was a week after payback. It was last week on Raw. Which would have been okay the week a week before it was the night after Raw. So the night after before payback. before last week's Raw, it was about two to three weeks in advance that they knew two to that three. Two okay, weeks, yeah. okay, two weeks, whatever <laughs> it was, that they were. So it was a last minute, pretty much a last yeah, minute yeah, yeah, decision. Yeah. Was, is the point I'm trying to make? No, I okay, get that. so now we're down. We've got three Evolution members. We've got Randy Orton, Triple H, and and let me see what the chat thinks. I'm about not that. so sure Evolution exists anymore. When the hell did you hear? All right, that? all right. Let's uh, let's just say this. We've got two members of the Shield. There's been a lot of talk, and and you can't deny this. At least in the comments section, even WWE.com took a poll yesterday. I think it was that said, "Hey." New member of the Shield. Yeah, two days Should ago. there be a new member of the Shield? And they had six different guys. All right. So what I'm saying is a new member of the Shield. They've been teasing it. They've been hinting at it. I'm saying a guy like Bo Dallas, with his current gimmick, with the Bo Leave thing, the Shield coming out week after week, saying Bo Leave in the Shield or Bo Leave in the okay. Shield. Wouldn't it make sense to have sense. a guy like Bo Dallas? Join the shield? Would it not make sense with his current gimmick? It wouldn't make sense. And here's a couple. Why wouldn't? Why? A, he wasn't even part of that article. B, they do articles on anything that's topical. Like what they do one time that was completely had to do it. It was like so fantasy article. They even done Sting, Undertaker stuff. Like anything they think the internet has interest in, they're trying to drive internet traffic to their website. Okay. And they do those articles to do that. Secondly, both Dallas is a heel. The shield are faces. How are they going to squeeze that ignorant asshole? cocky, inspirational prick two weeks into his run with WWE straight into the shield. Seth Rollins... Heel into the face group. Seth Rollins was a baby face two weeks ago. Now he's a full-fledged heel. Bo Dallas... He's just getting started. Seth no, Rollins I understand. has been around for a year and turned him. He's two weeks into his heel and run and they're going to say, let's turn your face and, and put you to the shield. And you're telling you me... Because you say believe no, and they no, no, say no. believe. And you're telling me that uh. WWE plans, they can have a guy one week even if he just comes in, they could turn Adam Rose heel next week. They do it all the time. Plans constantly change. If they see something, if one week a group of guys in creative comes together and they see something, don't read think, some of these comments and then you'll don't, see. Don't <laughs> think, don't think for one second. Clark overthinking. <laughs> Thank you, know, you Boone. Just, Clark <laughs> overthinking. Seth was established, and that's from Ryga, who doesn't even like me right now. You know does, what I mean? Does <laughs> anybody agree with that? Does anybody agree <laughs> that, that Bo Dallas? If you were to do a new Shield member, a new guy like Bo Dallas, I'm saying a guy like Adrian Neville down in NXT could come up and join the Shield. A lot of people are saying yeah. that as well. well I think uh, Sami Zayn would be the perfect fit. See, I don't think Sami would fit in. I think he'd with, fit perfect. Uh, he's got the same ring style. I don't know what the hell he can do on the mic. I've never heard him cut a promo, but obviously you don't need to cut a promo to look at Roman Reigns, you know, so... I'm, I'm saying, if, if there was to be a new Shield member, let's say that they are going to have a new member of the Shield come in. Who could it be? There are. It could be anybody on the roster. And I'm saying, out of anybody on the roster, Bo Dallas has the gimmick right there, except for the fact that, like you said, he's a heel. He's a heel, and it wouldn't make sense as he just came up on the television. He would be a heel. There's some great comments. We got no, I don't agree at all, Ryan. Stupid idea, Winter's Lair. And then we got Ryan Clark's biggest fan. Of yes, course, says agree yes, with I Ryan agree. Clark. A train says no. Go home, Ryan. You're drunk. Nope. Get the bow out of here from Pernelli. I'm gonna stick with it. It makes sense. You can't say it doesn't make sense. Bo I just leave. said it didn't make sense. Bow leave. Bow leave in the Just shield. because he says bow leave and they no, say bow leave in the shield. What other thing do you have besides it that? Does, to connect it does Listen, bro. It's it's a gimmick that. That believe in the shield, believe, believe in the shield. So other than that, we've fit. covered that. Other yeah. than that, I said that's really retarded. Nothing. That's a dumb thing. Other than that, there's really nothing. Yeah, so why are they do it? Shit, we could we could take it one step further. We could we could say that Rollins has long hair, Bo Dallas has long hair, but I'm wow. come on, I'm playing. Diet like half blonde and just remember playing. <laughs> have, 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 have him be the next step. Yeah. I'm playing. I'm just saying. <laughs> are Bo, you? Dallas, Bo, Bo Dallas is an up and comer, right? He's on the main roster. I don't think the current gimmick that he's in right now 
I don't think that's going to take off with WWE I'm fans. I'm still 50-50 on it. All right, you're 50 I could completely see it tanking, absolutely. I think it's going to tank. It, I think it very gonna, well probably I will. think it's going to completely tank and maybe the third time's a charm for Bo, right? First time didn't work when he was in the Royal Rumble. I saw your Facebook. And then they yeah. used him, right? So maybe the third time's a charm. This gimmick fails and they bring him back up. I'm saying... I think it's doing better than I thought it was going to do. That's what's surprising I, me. I think it's actually... When he does the victory lap, the people seem to get into that. Right. I pop when he said, "Yo, he's trying his best. Leave him alone." Right, right. I thought that was great, but I also think you know, you and he's got that fake smile. You just gotta believe. You know, I think I that's would, funny. I, I I would say that you know you could take. I mean, I think what everybody everybody's used to seeing. You see the current Bo Dallas character. I think let's just say for the hell of it, one week in the next couple of weeks or whatever, you throw a vest on the guy and you cut. You get him out of that corny. Believe you gotta believe everybody gotta, be- and you have them cut a more serious type promo. You can't do it this early. And you can't promo. do it. This they don't early even know the guy, yet. right? Yeah. He's only been there for a month or two, so it wouldn't you make sense. You put him sense. into a, a main event group like the Shield, and then just change his character overnight, and people are yeah. like, "Wait, people are gonna fuck? be like, wait, yeah, oh, that's fuck. the believe guy. Wait, what? What's it's going way, on? It would be way too yeah. early Which to is do why it right it's now. not gonna happen. But I agree with that. It would be way too early. I don't think they're gonna have a member of the Shield. I think eventually Ambrose is gonna turn on Reigns too. And then Reigns will be on his own because SummerSlam is only two Summer shows Slam away. Maybe Triple H and Roman. So right, yeah, maybe right. one, maybe maybe Money in the Bank will be together. Right. Maybe somewhere before or during Battleground, Ambrose turns to, and then Reigns is on his own going into SummerSlam. Reigns right. Triple H. That's what I think. It's just you could turn anybody. I think I think a lot of people. I think a lot of pro wrestling fans like <clears throat> what they see on TV. They see a guy like Bo Dallas. They see him act like that outside of the ring. Guy doesn't act like that. Not only that, but you could take Bo Dallas. And go a completely different gimmick, turn him into a completely different character, and you would be like, "Yo, that's the same Bo Dallas that we saw a couple of weeks ago doing yeah, yeah, the yeah. Bo Leave." Stuff. But listen, yeah, if you're a good you're performer, thinking, you can you can really get absolutely. into a and they give you a weird or shitty gimmick. Right. Of course, you could you can make the best of like Damian Sandow. Let's put it this way: they can make Damian Sandow a hard ass tomorrow, and he can get it over. Absolutely, and Damian look what he's been Sandow. doing. You know right. what I mean? So he can get anything, and yeah, and you'd be like, "Wow, that's the same guy." That that's did that. the same but guy that did that. You right. don't do it overnight, and it would take a while before Bo Dallas would be ready to jump into the Shield. And they right. need somebody if they're gonna put a new member in. They got to do it soon. And I don't right. think they're gonna do it at all. Like I said, I think Probably Ambrose. Not. I think if Ambrose eventually turns to the dark side too. And then Reigns is left to fucking overcome all these odds. And Where would Ambrose turns go, though? Him. Would Ambrose... You talking Ambrose goes off on his own, or does he join... He probably joins the... the yeah, he, he says, fuck it, you know, like, fuck, if you can't beat... They'll keep kicking their ass or something, something. Right. And he'll say, fuck it, I'm going there, too, you know. Yeah, yeah. Something. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, either way, I think, I mean... Bo Dallas, I I mean, I'll give him a couple more weeks, dude. I didn't we'll see give that coming, man. A 20 we'll minute rant about I Bo know, Dallas on the Dallas. field. I did not see that coming. I was trying to sell it, but everybody in the chat room says, You're full of shit, Kelly. <laughs> so fuck you, man. Are we doing calls? <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, we'll take him in. <laughs> Bo Leave and Ryan Clark, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, Boone? What's going on, Ryan? How you doing, man? Hey, um, just two quick things. Um, did you guys see on the opening segment last night, I mean, um, when Tri- Triple H and Stephanie came out, it was supposed to be like an announcement that no one knew what it was going to be, but they had the title hanging from the, the ceiling, like on the thing, so if you're the fans there, wouldn't you just like have to just look up and see the titles hanging there and know, oh, well, they were going to strip them, but then I thought, well, maybe they just had somebody drop the title down after they made the announcement, but did you guys notice that too? You know what oh, the funny thing I is? I thought he was going somewhere completely different. Let me, Thanks for the call, me, by the way. Let me say something. <clears throat> I put it up on, uh, on my Facebook last night. Uh, for those of you that are unaware, if you're a WWE champion, whether you're the United States champion, the IC champion, a lot of people ask, and, and we've had the question before, do those champions carry the belts? Do they leave Raw? Do they oh. leave SmackDown with the belts? Do they carry them through the airport? And the, and the answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, and if you lose one of those belts, you're in big trouble as <laughs> you're costing WWE thousands of, I believe they thousands back of up, dollars. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So so basically what happens is like a Sheamus who's U.S. champion. and just spit all I'm over. Sorry. I mean, that wasn't even a little bit. Jesus Christ. Uh, so Daniel Bryan, you know, WWE <coughs> champion. 
takes that belt after Raw's over and flies home with it, takes it home. Same thing with the Same IC. With the, and, and the Money in the Bank briefcase. <laughs> they gotta log that fucking thing. They gotta around. carry that. So you <sighs> never put it in your your checked in. So luggage. what was this point? You do the hold on. You do the carry on. You always carry it with yeah, you yeah, so yeah. that you make sure that you don't lose the official WWE belts. But basically, um, what he what his question was is you know the belts were hanging above the ring. So the whole live crowd knew that, wow, the belts are above the ring. They already knew that the titles were going to be stripped of yeah. Brian. Or was somebody holding the belts, and then when the announcement was made, did somebody up above drop the belts down, and then they were hanging there? Okay, that, well, I that's got... probably... I don't want to ignore this caller. Uh, caller, hang on one second. I just want to make two points. A, if Brian's a champion... I kept thinking it all night. I'm like, wait a minute. The belts are hanging above the ring, and yet Brian's a champion, but he's not there. So how the hell did they get the titles off of him? <laughs> and he would have had the surrender the belts. he's finding out for the first right. time right now on TV that he's being stripped. Like, wait a minute. How did he just now find out? Yeah, you've already got the fucking well, that's, belts. That's, and that's, B, my other thing was, money in the bank, there's still two belts. Right. What if somebody grabs one... And somebody grabs the other at the same time, and now we, who's the real champion, and we do that again. They could do that, too. There's they still the, two belts. If they do the second Money in the Bank match, the winner of that match would challenge, he would have the opportunity yeah, to challenge Yeah, but that would be split the titles, yeah. Right. I don't think they're doing that, but right. it leaves the window open for them to do it. Right, right, right. Know. But it would make sense with the second Money in the Bank match, okay, the winner of that match would have the opportunity to face... Either let's say Randy Orton grabs the one belt, John or Cena, yeah, John whoever, Cena grabs yeah, the yeah, other yeah. belt. The other Money in the Bank match, they would. And not only that, but back to uh, the the first caller's question was, you know, Daniel Bryan. Yeah, that's where I was going with Daniel Bryan. I mean, the WWE champions they carry the belts with them and they take them home. This, that, and the other thing. Uh, so Daniel would have had those belts. So Stephanie and Triple H would have had to come get those belts from him, take them. So Daniel Bryan's just finding this out now. It doesn't I think add up. What she said. Nothing adds. It, no. was, it was. It was weird. Yeah, it was weird. Uh, caller, you're live on WZR TV. What's up? Yeah, just, uh, two quick questions. Um, first one, uh, you know, yes, me. And you know, I watch uh, TNA. I guess a lot, and uh, they always pull a point eight and point nine rating. Is there anything else they can do to get higher ratings, like maybe one point one or one point two on a regular basis? You think? Or what, bro? TNA, TNA is in is in rough shape. Um, uh, he's talking about ratings in TNA where they draw like oh a point nine. What about their attendance? I gotta be honest with you, dude, <laughs> and, and and Boom will tell you I was tuning in to Impact uh, pretty much week after week. I haven't watched Impact in the last couple of weeks just because they've done nothing to lure me in to watch impact there's just been it's such a flat stale show it sucks. where they need to do something they need something it's i don't know what it is uh, i remember when i first moved here you would i fucking, mean it's the booking obviously you were all over me to watch impact no man you like and i watched it and this was fucking damn near i've only already been here almost a year now yeah. this was almost a year ago it was decent then right you know i could get through it you asked me to sit there and watch Impact now, I'd say, fuck you, yeah, man. I ain't watching that book. I got ba- I ain't even got nothing to do, and I got better shit to do than that. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's not <laughs> good, man. It, yeah. it, it, you know, it hasn't improved. And their attendance, yeah. the baseball stadium, they had 200 people. Yeah, there were there what were three the fuck was there that? were three hundred people. Not only that, but they're going. I mean, for TNA live events, they're drawing three hundred people, two hundred people at some of these events, and it's what does ROH draw? Eight hundred, thousand, Ring 1200. of Honor, Ring of Honor at their shows. I mean, let's say uh, if ROH is in Virginia or somebody were like that, uh, some, somewhere like that, they'll draw six, seven hundred people. And that's in a f- they're a foreign market. They're Philly, New York, or whatever, right? They, I mean, listen, let's be honest. They don't want to be outshined by a Ring of Honor when they come to New York City for those impact tapings. So they are spending advertising money on some of the most expensive stations in the New York City market um, to promote their product that, hey, coming up in, in August, we're going to have impact tapings here. So let's, you know, they're trying yeah. so hard to sell tickets because Ring of Honor just had their uh, War of the Worlds uh, eye pay-per-view there, and they sold the building out, which is like 20, 2,300 people, 2,400 people. And now they're debuting on a real yeah. pay-per-view. You know what I mean? Like, now it's like, they might become a contender. <coughs> TNA's got 
national television, and they got international deals yeah. in England and shit. Ring of Honor ain't got that, and they're outdrawing them locally. Yeah, it's uh, or you it's, know uh, outdrawing them at the arenas and shit. TNA's got the national TV deal, man. Like like Boone's talking about, mm-hmm. it's, and they got stars. They got Kurt Angle. They got Jeff Hardy. Right. Ring of Honor's got people you've never fucking heard of. Kevin Steen, by the way, coming to uh, WWE. Yeah, uh, uh, so. get Kelly's other question. We're gonna miss this caller. Call Kelly, back. thanks for the call, bro. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, uh, one more. What do you got? Wait, one more question. One more quick question. In hello. Who? Yeah, yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Right, what's uh, up? Last question is: um, What's the latest news with uh, uh, Jeff Jarrett's GFW? Uh, and that's it. Uh, he's still releasing uh, promo videos and, and things like that, man. Um, it looks like either late 2014. I'm thinking early 2015 before that promotion launches. Taking things real slow, where when he launches, yeah, slow build. Slow build. When he launches, they're probably going to have a TV deal in place. Yeah. I would guess get they're going to have talk, a get a buzz going, and then fucking here right we come. Now, yeah. ju- judging by all of his videos, it seems like Jeff and Karen, uh, Scott Diamore, uh, guys, that, guy that used to be in TNA, they're going around the local promotions and are scouting talent to see. Which guys do you think, or do we think, that we can use in this new Global Force Wrestling promotion? Um, and, you know, like Boone said, they're taking it nice and yeah. slow. It's a smart way to do it. And, and release videos week after Yeah, they're doing the, do uh, the Journey webisodes, which was the reality right. show that I was telling you about. They were going to do this long reality show to build up to the, the launch of the promotion. Yeah, right. What do you think about Mick Foley doing those, by the way? He did, like, two of them, right? I thought it was interesting. I'm like, wow, this fucking guy, you know, he's... Jumping on a thing that isn't even established yet. Yeah, but some you know credibility. What? I mean, we were just talking about Ring of Honor. I mean, Mick Foley's worked a couple of Ring of Honor shows. Yeah. Ring of Honor was promoting uh, just, what, two months ago? Uh, Mick Foley did a comedy show down in Baltimore, Maryland. Ring of Honor sent out a press release hyping that Mick Foley was going to be at this comedy show, you know, hyping tickets and everything yeah, yeah, else. Yeah. So it's kind of, I, I think Mick wants to have a good relationship with everybody. You know? I think when he did the first one, he might have, maybe not, I, I thought he was still on a the Legends deal, maybe not, because the first one, he's done two, Right. the second one was like two, three weeks ago, the first one was like four, five weeks ago, Yeah. I could swear his deal expired like you last know, month or something, like he might have still, but there's no way he was, because he couldn't have done it then. You know what I like about Foley is, in his blogs about Daniel Bryan and, and other he's guys, honest. He is not holding back. He doesn't care. Uh, he's uh, always been like that. He's not, but he's not under contract with WWE. Yeah. So he doesn't have to, you know. Oh, but even when he was, he was not. Even like right. his books, he would be, you know, he'd be honest, but, and in interviews, like off the record, he would yeah. blast out to be, and he'd be an act. He was the wrestling. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. And he would say whatever the fuck he wanted. Like he That's just good. doesn't care. I, right, I, you we got to uh, we got to finish up Monday Night Raw here. One more uh, one more phone call. Caller, you're live on WZR TV. What's going on? Yeah, you were talking about the comparisons between ROH and uh, TNA um, show attendance. Uh, I, I went to the, uh, the ROH show in Carbon on, on Friday night, and uh, it, it had uh, 250 people there, but it was it was almost filled it was almost filled up because it's uh, they only use the right size venue. That's TNA's problem; they don't use the right size venues. Yeah, that's that's another thing. Thanks for the TNA, call. TNA runs these ten thousand seat arenas, but and they, then they draw four hundred people. And it's like whoa. Still, <laughs> all right. So TNA runs a ten thousand seat <coughs> building. They can only sell four hundred tickets. ROH runs a two thousand seat building. They sell twelve thousand or twelve hundred tickets. Either way, you're still like it, all right. It doesn't matter how big the building is. How many tickets can you sell? All right, you're not gonna fill a ten thousand seat building right. up. It doesn't matter but how you it can't, looks. Yeah, if you can't sell a thousand. Tickets and they can. Doesn't matter what size building you're in. The bottom line is, this, there's more interest in this than this. It's 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 not how the building looks. It's how many tickets you sell and how much money you make. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's all about the money in the long run. Are you making a profit? Are you not making a profit? And it's a business in the end. So it's not about making the arena look good or or this that and the other yeah. thing. It's uh, let's speed right. through Raw, Seth right. Rollins yeah. and whatever the fuck we else do, is important. We're we're going right to the main event. We, we had R V D. We had uh, R V D and. We Cesaro, yeah. Money in the Bank. We had a Cesaro. Cesaro on they did a Paul Heyman promo where he teased it was Brock Lesnar. Right, right. But he was basically, you didn't know who he was talking about. This guy said history at WrestleMania, blah, blah. Right. And then when it finally came to pass, it was, he won the Andre the Memorial, because they're in right. Lesnar's hometown, Minnesota. Minnesota, right. 
This is already came out. Yeah. Seth Rollins, man. Seth thought What'd Seth Rollins think? comes out. I thought it was great, man. Me too. Um, you know, the he, not, only that, got it. not only that, but he had a lot of lines that he had to memorize before coming out there. And and listen, he impro- you could tell when he was improvising and when he was not improvising. You know, the best improvisation? There were a lot. The best improvisation. Improvisation? Is you sold uh, out. You sold out. Oh, my God. He, he said, no, I didn't. I bought in. He says, no, I didn't sell it. I bought in. And what did he that buy in? Awesome. What did he buy into? That was awesome. He bought into... The evolution. The evolution of Seth Rollins. Rollins. Yeah, man. Perfect! It was awesome. Fucking perfect! I, when good. he said that, I was like, yeah, man, right. you fucking stuck right. it to him, bro. You got him. He uh, he was awesome with the promo. You know, Michael Cole was asking him why he did it. He says, listen, I, these guys... We're never my brothers, you know. Business I mean, partners, they were, were the business, business partners, partners yeah. not brothers, just that and the other He thing. carried them, he created the shield, but he, he did carried them. Br- he did bring up that, I did what's best for business, you know what I mean? And God, we haven't heard that in, what, a couple of weeks now. Triple H is definitely He dropped it once or week. twice, Triple H did. But, did he? Yeah. But he says, I'm doing what's best for business. Maybe Stephanie mentioned it with the, you know, all we're trying to do, we need a fighting yeah. champion. It's what's best for business. It's a, it's a champion that, that fights yes. and defends the title, this, that, and the other thing. Correct. But... Seth was awesome he killed last it. night. During he did this a problem. great, great job. Very good. We had Paige, Alicia Fox. Got Oksana came out with Alicia Fox. You know, they had him. You know, basically Alicia Fox is still that loose cannon. She does the meltdown. With, friends with Oksana one week, the next yeah. week meltdown, and, and it's over. Uh, Jack Swagger, Santino, was most pure pointless comedy. thing ever. Yeah. And then the main event, dude. We had uh, John Cena and Dean Ambrose. Roman. Well, they did real quick. They did a Vicky Guerrero thing. It looks like they're building up to where they're going to fire her again. Right. Because there's been talk no. she's gone. You know what? I think that was a one time spot. Oh, it so. seemed to me like I think a each week spot. she's gonna fuck up and piss Stephanie off. Don't yeah. make me fire you, don't make me fire you. You're fired eventually. And then she's going for good. And then she does her thing that she wants to do. Right. She's thing. gonna be taking yeah, yeah. time off, so, so it's I think it's a slow build that. towards that. Yeah. We knew all along, I mean they hyped up that the shield was gonna have a mystery partner. That was the somebody other thing that Shellick broke. The Vicky yeah, Guerrero one. Vicky Guerrero you were thinking it's, it was it's Vicky. It was yeah, Vicky. yeah, I forgot about that I just that thought one. about it, but I was going to bring it up. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> so we, sorry. No, it's all good. <laughs> we, uh, <coughs> we mentioned it. Uh, everybody knew going in that John Cena was going to be the partner for... Well, the other right. thing, real quick, during the Seth Rollins... He a run in, that's right. Yeah, during right. the Seth Rollins thing, earlier in the night when, when they stripped Brian, Triple H then went into the Seth Rollins stuff and said, tonight's main event uh, will be Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose against all three members of the Wyatt family in a six-man tag. Uh, now, good luck to them, Reigns and Ambrose, finding a tag partner because they've alienated the whole locker room by beating their ass the last year. Right, right. You know, and then Cena, when, when, it, when push came to shove, because uh, when Ambrose and uh, Ron, Reigns cut the promo room the night, they said, we're going to listen to what Rollins has to say, then we're going to come out and we're going to beat your ass. Right. So when Rollins finished his thing, he said, all right, you guys promised you were going to kick my ass when I was done. Well, guess what? I'm done. Here come I beat am. my ass. Here I am. And when they came out, the Wyatt family, yeah! cut in, happened, lights go off, lights come right. on. Harper and Rowan are standing there. Reigns and Ambrose are standing there. Rollins is outside the ring. They start fucking fighting. They get their hands on Rollins briefly, and then Bray hits the ring, and, and, and then, you know, Cena right. makes the save. Right. So we knew, as soon as that happened, I said, I guess we know who, the, in my play by play, I guess we know who uh, Ambrose and Reigns' partner is. Yeah. Right, absolutely. And it ended up being Cena, and they did the six man main event. Came down to match. Uh, yeah. Everybody hit their finishing spots. Uh, Roman Reigns wound up hitting the spear on Eric Rowan yeah. and uh, and got the pin there. They had uh, Triple H and Seth Rollins were backstage watching, watching on a yeah. monitor, uh, looking like what the fuck, man. We yeah, because they had hyped, that last night. They had hyped up. Well, we'll talk there about was, Goldust to Cody Rhodes. There was that, and there was the. Uh, Rollins was watching Reigns and Ambrose talk when they were cutting their promo. Right. When Rollins was talking, we saw Reigns and Ambrose watching him. Right. right. When uh, Goldust was wrestling, we saw Cody Rhodes watching that. There was a lot of backstage, let's see what's happening shit. Right. You know. So that was just another one of them. And uh, uh, Cody Rhodes had said that, you know, next week on Raw, he's going to bring somebody... It's going to magnify Mag- the Mag- magnificence. That's what it was yeah. uh, for Goldust next week. I There's thought Magnificent Goldust. Morocco, but he's either dead or very old right now. By the way, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, The Miz. Uh, he was backstage at Raw last night, worked uh, weekend WWE live events. Now listen. They're Rick in Cliff, Cleveland next week. They're in Cle- that's Miz's hometown. Oh, you're going they're there. In, okay. They're in Cleveland, uh, Ohio next week. That's Miz's hometown. Ric Flair uh, just recently, yeah. like we talked about in hour one. And Miz returned on the uh, recent house show. House show so he's weekend. back. He's ready. Right, They're just waiting right. for something for him. So it seems like to me that they held off Miz uh, you, I can't from believe we didn't talk night. about this. What do you think about them wasting Ric Flair? 
On the Miz, I By know. By putting him with the Miz. Well, that's what we were talking about earlier. Somebody that could manage. Waste. Man. You know, yeah, it's 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 a waste. Yeah, but it, it, I I get it. It makes sense as you know, Miz and Flair have that past, and and Miz was using the I thought the past sucked lock. too. Though. It was <laughs> terrible. The yeah. past was terrible. All right, let's take a bad idea and I do know. it again. You know, I they're know. getting into WCW territory here a little I bit. Know. Like, yo, I that know. sucked. Let's do it again. Right now. All right, here we go. We got to get into rapid fire. We got about ten minutes this week for rapid fire, and then, oops, and then we are gonna have WWE Let's SmackDown spoilers. What do we got? Arrows. Uh-huh. Oh, you gotta click on the paint. Yeah, to it's use the pain. arrows. Oh, all right, it's a pain in the ass. All right, here we go. Tim Krieger starts us off. He says, "What do you think about Reigns talking to Ronda Rousey about putting on a vest and joining the Shield, even if just for one night?" It's Did you see that happen. today? It's yeah, not gonna it, happen. It, it is and, not and, happen. and Rousey marked out. She's like, I can't believe a Roman Reigns oh, no. tweeted me. Like she's a mark for pro wrestling, dude. Well, Didn't more she, so her friends are. So they're getting her into it. Right, right, right. The uh, four horsewomen: Shayna Baszler, Jessamyn Duke, right. and I don't remember that other one. But she put up a video last week. Was it a video last week with uh? It wasn't. She, was she didn't put it, Well, she put it on her Instagram, but it was they were recording her right watching the Seth Rollins turn, and as soon as he hit the chair on the back of Reigns, she was she's like. like <gasps> Oh my god! <laughs> you saw her do that. You put it up on the website. And you saw the hot chick, the tall one, the hey. model, this man Duke. Like, look at her. Like, eh, look at her. You got to make this real quick. Okay. Real quick. Chel Sonnen. Chel Sonnen. A random drug test. Yeah, but he took some shit. Okay, so the story was originally it was Chel Sonnen and Vanilla Silva. Vanilla Silva ran away from the drug test, and then it became Chel Sonnen Vitor Belfort. If Vitor Belfort can get a license. Uh, so they, they, the same day they go to test Vanillay and he ran away, mm. Chael did take the test, but it turns out we found out today that he failed it. He didn't take any steroids, any anabolics, any performancing drugs, but he took two things that are banned substances, which, yes. according to him, you need to get off of TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, which right. he was on, as was Vitor, as was Frank Mir, as was a couple other guys. But, all right, so he's transitioning off TRT, and because he's taking this stuff, and the commission's just changed the ruling on it, now all of a sudden this stuff's not legal either, and that's why he claims he failed. Which is pretty much bullshit. MMAScoops.com has more details on it. Check out MMAScoops.com. They've got it all. Teresa Baker, hey, dolls, missing the show except a quick minute. My question, where in the F is Sammy Callahan? Solomon Crow, not even a word has been uttered about him. Good question. He had that. He had a hacker gimmick, and then they just stopped. Kind of dropped it, and then he went away. Is he injured? Do I remember something about him being injured? That could be it. I don't know. Maybe they're repackaging him, keeping him off for a while. Tom Nelson says. Who do you guys see as champion coming out of Money in the Bank? That's We're gonna give our prediction. I can't say until I know who's weeks. in it. Yeah, I don't right. know who's all in it yet. I'm, I'm uh, scared at Cena, but I'm hoping not. But we'll see. Yeah, give give us uh, the the show the Tuesday before the Money in the Bank uh, pay per view. We've been given our predictions, so we'll run it down. You ready for the quickest answer in rapid fire history? Here next, got? Larry Smith. Larry Smith. Will WWE ever invade TNA? No, no, not next. unless not unless they buy them out. Why would you keep going? The not quickest unless answer. They buy them out. No, next is... Not unless they buy them out. <laughs> yeah. Just like they did with ECW and everything else. There. Remember ECW guys came I'll out give you the next one too because that's about you. Dean Mitchell, what is the best sandals, plain socks, striped socks, or patterned socks? Oh, what is the best? Sandals? I couldn't tell you. Plain socks? Oh, plain socks. Plain white socks. Plain white socks. Yeah, he says, what's best with sandals? Plain socks, striped socks, or patterned socks? Christopher plain Brown socks. says, with that little... Confrontation between Triple H, it's all blurry for me. Confrontation between Triple H and Vicky last night. How long before she's out of the door and her place? Yeah, we already talked about that. She's going to get I guarantee it. you that's a build up to her getting fired. She's going to keep pissing them off and annoying them, and they fire her. That's my prediction. All right, Romero, what's your opinion of the recent audience problem? Of the of TNA's recent audience oh, problem. Oh, TNA's recent audience problem. We talked about uh, that. Yeah, I talked about that earlier, man. It's not good. Yeah, it's Jason not good. Hansen is talking to you. Ryan, last December you guaranteed Sonny to be on the show. Then last month you said Roddy Piper was confirmed. <laughs> and just a few weeks ago you said Russo is confirmed. <laughs> June third. And yet, as always, nothing. What's with the false Don't advertisements? Me, LOL. All right, let me tell you, you want something. Guess, I'll get guess. Let me tell you something. If you <coughs> have viewed my Twitter account, Rowdy Roddy Piper wants me 
to be on his podcast. Boone can confirm this. That's unfortunately he true. He tweeted that about a w- less than a week ago. About a week ago. About a week ago. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think it was a little bit less than a week ago. Roddy wants me to be on his podcast. I responded to that tweet and I said, I'll be on your podcast. You come on my podcast. Roddy never got back to me. I then sent him a direct message on Twitter and said, Roddy, can we arrange this? Can you know? I'll be on your podcast. You come on my podcast. Haven't heard back from Roddy. I swear to God, God if I go to podcast one swear one day, I was gonna right. say no. I swear right. to God, I said. Right. I was gonna say come. Right. I swear to God, if I go to podcast one dot com one day and I go to Piper Spit because I check all the wrestling podcasts, I all listen right. to them all. If I ever fucking look at that and see. Today's guest, Ryan Clark. I'm going to fucking puke all over myself. He is. So all I got to do is work out a My deal. My hero and you get to be on this show. All I got to do is work out a deal with Roddy and, and our podcast to cross promote. That's number one. Number two, Fuck Vince Russo. Vince Russo. And Boo knows the story behind this, I know too. that one, too. Yeah. I sent an email to Vince Russo yeah. about three days ago, and I said, Hey, man, we were supposed to have you on on June 3rd. Can we rebook the date? The problem with Russo is he had a couple of different interviews scheduled. He doesn't want all the interviews at one time. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't want to horn himself out. He wants them to be spread out so that when they are done, they can be promoted and properly promoted. He's trying to push a new website. This, that, and the other thing. And he doesn't want all of it at once. He wants slow build. You know, slow this build week we get some website. promotion. Next week we get some promotion. The next week we get some... We don't want to do it and, all at once. And... PyroandBallyHoo.com is the website. Sonny, Sonny, uh, Tammy Sitch... Got sick when she was she was gonna come on. I will be honest with you guys, I am worried about Tammy, and I put it up on the website uh, about a week or two ago. Oh what? Hasn't been on Twitter, hasn't responded to emails. Somebody sent me an email, and I will show it to you. Okay. That Tammy is not in very good shape again. So. You talking about drugs? I'm talking about personal issues. You talking about drugs? All right. So we got Brad. Fastuka, 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 I don't know how to say it, man. Brad F. says, Reigns promo was after an epic Ambrose promo. Do you think if Ambrose had cut his promo after Reigns that we would have a better perspective? I don't think there's many guys that can follow Ambrose on the mic. That's a good point. Reigns sucked no matter how you look at it, in my opinion. In my opinion, Ryan seemed to think it was good. I I didn't like it. I didn't say it was great. I didn't say great. I said you liked it. It It was good. I didn't like it, it was at decent. all. It was decent. Let's go with decent. All right, where did we leave off here? Uh, Teresa Baker. Teresa Baker. Dean Mitchell. That's not funny. I want him to stop doing that. Ha, 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 ha. Oh. Sandals and socks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Paul Velasquez says, says, Last week, TNA had ringside officials from MVP's little group, Evolution Ripoff in parentheses, with Kenny King and Bobby Lashley. Just last month, Triple H had himself and Randy Orton as ringside officials. I know everything is recycled and prohibition, but what is with the blatant ripoffs by TNA in the last few weeks? I don't consider that a blatant ripoff it's, at all. I didn't what? see it. I don't like that. We talk about it week after week, man. It's everything's been done. First of all, everything's been done. So, right. I yeah, you can't that, say all oh, they stole it from them because they're doing. There it. are there are things that WWE does that that TNA has done in the past, and there are things that TNA does that WWE has done in, in the Agreed. past. I mean, the Eric Young storyline that's a blatant, that was blatant. That is a blatant rip off of yeah. WWE storyline with Daniel Bryan. But see what happens. Hopefully, hopefully that's not karma for uh, for. Hopefully, Eric Young doesn't break his neck on his new Andy no Remy show or whatever. Thoughts on Kevin Steen signing with WWE? That's I gotta be honest to get with to you, it. I yeah. don't like it, man. I don't like it. I, f- number one, he's gonna, gonna be a goofy, fucking fat comedy character. He's gonna be the new. What's so. the guy that used to rub the oil on his ass? Uh, oh, Big Dick Johnson. That guy. He's gonna be that guy from now on. That's not Chris the Joseph. You know that the uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but no, I gotta tell you, Kevin Steen. I know I, I'm gonna miss him. Number one, in Ring you of Honor. You think they're gonna take him seriously and let I'm him gonna, do what he can do? I'm gonna miss Kevin Steen in Ring of Honor. I'll say that. And when he comes in the WWE, I thought his promos suck shit, even when they were God, could good. They, and Ryan, Kevin Steen, he, he just cusses a lot. Hey, dude, he was awesome. Kevin Yo, I'm gonna Ryan. beat your fucking ass, you fucking cocksucker. I'm gonna fuck you up. And he says that's a great promo. I say he just cussed a lot. Is, is Boone wrong on this one too? But listen, I was wrong on Bo Dallas. Let me finish. Is Boone wrong on Kevin Steen? I'm going to help you out. Stone Cold did the same thing. He just said ass a lot, and the Rockies always pointed that out, which I thought was funny, but Austin still got over like Rover. 
So, but yeah, I just thought he cussed a lot for the sake of cussing. I didn't think it was good. I didn't think it was organic. It was forced. He's just, you know, my opinion. I was wrong on Bo Dallas. I'll admit if I, you know, people, is I've Boo, never even seen the guy. I've seen a Boo few wrong, YouTube promos of his. That's it. Is Boone wrong on Kevin Steen? Or are y'all going to suck his dick on this? You're going to ask the internet you're marks. Gonna suck his dick on you're going to ask too? the internet marks about internet darling. Of course they love Kevin Steen's promos. I thought they sucked shit. In my opinion, I think they suck your dick all the time. Even when I have a good. Yeah, we're point, doing a Kevin Steen promo. I think, suck shit, suck dick. Yeah. I think when I have a good point to make, they all just don't want to agree. My Bo Dallas shit with wow. the Bo Leaf stuff. That was that was the dumbest fucking thing. That was fucking good. <laughs> all right. And every one of you motherfuckers, except for Ryan Clark's biggest fan. I love you, bro. I love you, man. Yeah. Uh, you shit. wonder which way he's gonna go. Everybody Ryan Clark's shit. biggest fan. Everybody shit all over that. There you the go. Steen is tonight. good. Alright. Well, there's a couple of them, I there's guess. One. There's no couple yet. There you go. Now you got a couple. Winner's Lair. At least Ryan I got a couple that are with me. Listen, I can't objectively <laughs> even say anything because I've never really watched the guy. You made me watch a promo of his once, I remember, <gasps> on YouTube. And you said, this is and his it was, best promo ever. It was. And crazy. I watched it and I said, this sucks. There's no substance. He's just cussing and, and trying. It sucks. Yeah. But whatever. Anyways, I think... I will say this: When Kevin Steen comes to WWE, I think they, you're probably right. It's you put the WWE good. handcuffs on oh, a guy you that are sweating like a man. It's hot out of here. I told you, I'm fucking hot. <laughs> you're man. starting to sweat, man. You see what's going on over here? Uh, no, 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 no. Like what are you doing? All right, here we go. Um, <coughs> let's see here. Where do we leave off? Uh, Anthony Remy. Now we got David Hadley. Which pay per view are you looking forward to more? Best TNA. In the world. TNA Slam anniversary or ROH <laughs> Best in the World? <laughs> Uh, the correct answer is neither. Oh, come on. R- neither, if you prefer. If you had to pick? I wouldn't. I don't watch ROH. I can't say, oh, I can't wait to see that. I don't know who the fuck any of those guys are. I know he their doesn't names. watch Ring of Honor and he hates Kevin Steen's promos. I promo. told What do you know? I was just honest. I said I've never seen Kevin Steen's promos except the ones you have me watch on YouTube. And I They're thought, great. he just cusses a lot. It's not good. There's no. There's nothing there. There's no substance. AJ Clark. What's the TNA questions tonight? Bro? I don't know. Uh, what do you think about? Th- what do you think TNA will do with MVP being injured? I'm and the pay per is no this idea. Sunday night predictions for TNA Slam anniversary this Sunday night. Ryan Clark's biggest fan. Listen, man, I don't have the uh, the card in front of me, but I got to be honest with you. Um, on Friday, I don't know if I asked you, but I had said either to myself or somebody. I said a Slam anniversary this Sunday night it's or this next Sunday, Sunday night. It's this coming, coming Sunday up, night. Yeah. I didn't even know that Slammiverse. I didn't know when the date of Slammiverse. I can tell you, Money in the Bank is June 29th. Slammiversary, which oh, is TNA, fucker, which is, which is TNA's second biggest pay per view of the year. I didn't know if it was this past Sunday or this Sunday coming up. That's not good. You can read the next one. Jay Mullen, I disagree with Boone on the Reigns promo. Fuck, here we go. It sucked! Uh, give the dude some time. Part of the problem with I wrestling had. fans, they want everything or expect too much all at once. Who expects too much all at once? It's been a year! It's been a year, we've barely seen him talk on the microphone. That's my point! They give him a line, a line, every week. For so a how year. do you know every he can't week. cut a 10 minute promo? Because they gave him a line for six months, then they gave him two lines for two months, then they gave him three lines for two months. Last night they gave him like four lines. He couldn't do four lines. He's had that's and he's on live television oh, in God. front of ten for the first time people. ever, right? Not for the first time so ever. So what the fuck dude. are we talking about? So you put him out there on house shows and you have him cut a, a five a good five minute promo for the next two months going into SummerSlam, going into the feud with Triple H. You have him cut that promo. Who's to say you don't think that for two months cutting a five minute promo, you don't think he's gonna get better? He'll he's get, gonna get better. He'll get better. But, you just said two months. Alright, so we're going with your two months. He had a year to do two lines. They gave him four lines, not five minutes. Four lines, 45. You hit a stopwatch, 45 <laughs> seconds. Well, I'll let you finish. One line for six months, two lines for six months. Last night, they doubled his load. Instead of two lines, you get four lines. Instead of 20 seconds, you get 40 seconds. He had a year to get ready for a 40 second promo, and he couldn't do it. You're telling me. After a year of a 20-second promo, they gave him a 40-second promo. He couldn't do it. You're saying in two months he can go from 40 seconds to five minutes? How the fuck is that going to happen? In a year, he couldn't double 20 seconds. Until last night, 
until last Fuck night. Guy. Okay. One guy agrees. And the, he feels like he's right now. Here for we the go. last couple of weeks, yeah. we've been coming on here week after week saying, "Yo, he's Roman delivering Reigns. that line, great. Roman Reigns." Yeah. Did it ever? Maybe, I said that in my breakdown. If you go back and listen, well, maybe he had one bad night. Maybe he was on live TV that's last possible. night. Maybe he had one bad. Maybe night. He got nervous. Who's, who's but that's a bad say? sign because that's saying once the spotlight's really on, he Jay, fails. Jay Mullen saying, "Give him a chance." Wrestling fans expect so much. The guy has one off night on Raw last night. Wrestling fans expect so much from a guy that God, if he flubs his line, oh, it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world. He didn't he had an off night. night. He sucked. There's a difference between stuttering on one sentence and just the whole promo sucking. I agree with you, Jay. Mm, you got one guy that agrees with you. Jordan the Jordan champ. Paul. Yeah, the champ, Jordan Paul Paveo says, Do you guys think Kevin Steen is going to be used right now? We already no. covered that. Arturo Velasquez Jr. says, Have you guys been watching Legends House? And if so, what do you think? <laughs> we didn't get to that. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Easy on the cigarette. They ran the promo last night for the fucking season finale, which is, uh, what's today? Tuesday? It's the day after the. Tomorrow night, if you're watching what, the archives. What, what, what did the promo leave off with? They said, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something I haven't told anybody in the million years. I can't do a French Canadian says, accent, but. I'm gonna tell you something that I haven't said to anybody. And I'm that, tired of living like says, this. And he's, I'm gonna be me for a change. And that is. What? <laughs> my favorite so part. My favorite Does part. Does anybody know that Pat Patterson is still not gay? Everybody knows, especially in the industry. All right, you this is his first time coming out on TV. I get that. My favorite part wasn't the way they cut off Pat Patterson building it up. It was the facial expressions they showed on Howard Finkel and Hacksaw <laughs> Jim Duggan. I remember those two in, in, in specific. And they're like, like, holy shit, he's gay. Like guys, right. now come, you're come on now. So the whole season was bullshit. Your total divas part two. You know what I mean? Right. Like, come right. on. I wonder who had don't to, work uh, us. You know how they had roommates where like hacksaw Jim Doug yeah, yeah, yeah. with Roddy Piper. I wonder who got to be with uh, Patterson. And I'm telling you <laughs> right hopefully, now, hopefully Patterson got his own room. <laughs> no, no, no. It was Patterson and and somebody. Mean Gene, maybe I think. <laughs> was they're it? Always, mean Gene they're always playing stuck. cards together. I know oh, but uh, God. the other thing is. Patterson, mean mi- Gene. Patterson might not. Be, <laughs> Patterson might not be the only gay guy on that show. Hacksaw Jim Duggan seems to be. No, he's in got love. a wife. He's got a wife. I'm joking. That's All my right. point. Okay. He seems to be in love with Roddy Piper. He's up his ass. Yo, oh, they had the episode where. Yeah, oh, oh, is it Piper on the phone? Because Piper had to go to right. an autograph signing. Piper so every time the phone rings, oh, 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 is it Piper? Is it Piper? Oh, oh, oh. And they're roommates, and like Axel always overly laughs at all of Piper's right, jokes. Right, you know right. how you do with a girl right. when she's not funny, but she's trying to be funny? Like, ah, that's good. You know, you're fucking funny. And meanwhile, in your head, you're like, yeah, that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I can't right. wait to fuck you later. You know what I mean? Like, Axel has that, that gushy gaga thing with fucking Piper. It's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it, uh, you I love don't him. Know. Just I say don't it. Know. You got a man crush on Rowdy Roddy a Piper. Roddy Piper? Yeah. The podcast that I'm supposed to be on here. I'm going to walk yeah. off the show, bro. You keep this shit up. In a, in a week or so. Where's Rowdy Piper? Are we done? The podcast. Yeah. So t- <laughs> it's your turn. Got, Go ahead. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? We got Jose Leza. Lisa? Lisa. Will TNA ever go back to having a wrestling show instead of a slapstick comedy? Man, TNA's If they in fire trouble, Vince man. Russo, you know, maybe. TNA's in trouble. Uh, Vincent Nugent, up next. What's up with the angle between Dixie Carter and TNA? God damn, oh, the TNA. Tommy I don't watch Dreamer, TNA. House of Hardcore. I mean, listen. Tommy I know Dreamer the story. Came out, House of yeah, Hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Tommy Dreamer came out, called her a bitch and a cunt. Well, here's the story. Bully Ray was booked for House of Hardcore. Yeah. And then TNA and Dixie supposedly pulled him. Because right. they want him to be at the Spike Awards or whatever. Right. So Tommy Dreamer had to apologize. And then Bully Ray put on Twitter, yo, and the next time, I forget what the event is, but come here, bring your ticket stubs from House Hardcore. I'll sign your autographs. I'll take right. pictures, whatever the fuck. Trying to make good on the, uh, yeah. on the thing. All right. David Hadley says, why is TNA, again with the TNA, in the next two, there's one WWE and another TNA. We're, we're why does TNA hold house shows in large arenas instead of... Oh, we've already talked about that. Yeah. talked about that earlier, man. It makes no sense to have it's 400 retarded. fans in a 10,000-seat arena. And I think they're scaling back on that. 
um, as future bookings. If you look at some of the locations, they're not running these big arenas. Anymore. I think early part of it was just arrogance. Like, yo, we're on national TV. We can go to a big market right. and sell 500, 700, 800 tickets. Yeah. Last one. Prior to the, it's from uh, Paul Velasquez, prior to Raw 1000, the 1000th edition of Monday Night Raw, it was reported that WWE asked somebody to volunteer to work with random returning legends. Heath Slater reportedly volunteered. Did you hear about this? I wasn't listening. Uh, do you think it's possible they asked the roster for somebody to volunteer for random skits on Raw to see who steps up and is loyal enough to the point where Sandow volunteered since he wasn't doing doing anything relevant anyways? I can't see him being a guy to piss somebody off to be in the doghouse. What do you guys think? It's talking about prior to the 1,000th... One, I've always had a problem with this. 1,000th... One thousand. Remember? Yeah. We talked about this a couple of months ago it, okay. when we had yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Anyways, it was reported that WWE asked somebody to volunteer to work with random returning legends. I don't remember this. I don't either. I, don't I wasn't watching at that point. I remember being in the hotel and I watched the one thousand throw. That was the first show I had seen in fucking weeks or months or something. Yeah. That's a Tuesday night, brother. We'll call that Tuesday? We'll call that a Tuesday. We'll call that Tuesday eight to ten. <laughs> eight to ten oh right. ten ten ten. 10, 10 p.m. I didn't like this week's show. I wasn't feeling it. You didn't like it? it? I wasn't feeling it, man. Nah, it was a good show. All right. I'll take your word. All right. Need some feedback. Oh, we want it's you to. not up to us. No, we want you to tell us if you like the show, and we want you to tell us by logging on to your little goddamn computers, and you go to, you know, I'll do it in the Kevin. What's up, goddamn computer? Can we do it in Kevin Steen promo version of our plug here? Yo, you motherfuckers. Hey, you fucking cocksuckers. Go to fucking Facebook, fucking dot com, fucking slash... Ryan motherfucking Clark sla- that screws up the URL. Go to motherfucking Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR and if you have too much fucking trouble spelling that, you fucking cocksuckers, you go to fucking Facebook fucking dot com slash Matt Boone WZR, you son of a cocksucking bitches. I'll kick your ass at ROH Best in the World, motherfucker, and leave us your feedback and let us know what you motherfuckers thought. That's a Kevin Steen promo. If you like what we did, you tell us, we'll do more of it. If you didn't like what we did, you tell us, we'll do less of it. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Facebook.com slash Matt Boone WZR. That's really where it's at. What's up? If you got kids in the room. <laughs> we I never claim to be PG. I right? apologize. <coughs> this cocksucker right here. Matt motherfucking Boone. Ryan Clark. Fucking that guy right there. And see you next Tuesday night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time. On WZROnline.com. Motherfucking.com. I always say that. Whoa! <laughs> 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 <laughs>